Hello from the live lounge here in Portsmouth. A very good morning and welcome to day three here at the Moda Super Series. It is week 10 of our action in our third series and we have been treated to some excellent arrows over the previous two days. Today we'll see the combination of Group A where the first player will see their way through into Saturday night's final. But before we look ahead to the action, let's see what happened yesterday. Kenny Nains ended Tuesday with zero points for the day, but still had moments of quality, just like this 1-10 finish against Alex Spelman. Nathan Gerben bounced back following a tough Monday. He won three from five on his second day. It was a mixed bag as far as Alexander Merckx was concerned. Two wins from his five games, including his 4-1 win against his Belgian friend Kenny Nayans, both of them travel partners. Meanwhile, for Stephen Johnson, they showed plenty of fight and passion with this 118 finish. And a look at that for a celebration. And so Luke Litter, he's fully in the mix to win the week, recording the highest finish of the day with this 148. But it's Spellman at the summit as far as the table is concerned. It is he who's going to be the man to prize apart on the final day of Group A action. So, so that is what happened yesterday here at the Super Series. Alex Spellman at the top of the table. Matthew Edgar was describing all the action in the country box. He joins us up here on the balcony now for his assessment of day two. Day two has really shaken up what we're going to see today. When we look at the averages from day one to day two, people who had a high average on day one had a lower average on day two, and those that had a low average on day two had a higher average on day one. It's a complete crossover, but right in the middle of that X that we sort of draw in there is Alex Spellman. He was consistent across both days. His average didn't waver, it didn't get stronger, and that consistency is why he's top of the table, because he's got that good baseline of performance. Let's see the numbers then from our second day's action here at the Super Series. 81 legs played all in all. Luke Little with the highest check of 148. He also had a 10 data, and he dominates the stats as far as highest average is concerned. And that's where we've got to pay our attention, I think, today, when we're looking forward to today and saying who's going to be the guy who could top this group and go straight through to Saturday. And he's the guy who deserves the attention for those reasons, those big key stats. He is the guy at the moment winning the most titles, both on the seniors and on the junior tour at the moment. And it just looks like it's taking him a little bit of time to settle in. That doesn't mean he's been playing bad. He's running at an average of a mid-91, which is very, very respectable. And if that was anybody else, we'd say that is a group winning form. It's just that we're judging him by the excellent standards that he has set. And when he put that 107 in, that was the moment I said Luke Little has arrived. You said on Monday the 32% in terms of the checkout percentages are down. Would you say the 34% is a bit under par or over par if you get the golfing reference? Well, it's exactly what I just said in terms of the two days so far. We've had days where it's been off and under par. We've had one where it's been over. So today's probably a day it's going to level off and we're really going to see that come through. There's a lot of people now who probably know they're not going to win this group, which means we might see the best of them. And certainly they're going to want to be in Group B because that has its advantages as well. But I think today, by the numbers, is going to be the strongest one so far. Well, let's have a look at the leaderboard as we head into the final round of Group A. As things stand, Alex Spellman is the clubhouse leader, 16 points to his name, plus 11 in terms of the legs difference. But that was really clawed back by Luke Little at the latter end of yesterday because there was a point where Alex was the only player who had a positive legs difference. We do have a situation today, game number three, Luke Littler versus Alex Spellman, where that one could be the one that decides this group. I kind of hope that it gets to that point where both these players are getting their results because selfishly, I want to see that game. I want to see how they sort of react in that situation. But Stephen Johnson is there to disturb this party as well. He's still well and truly in the running after a good performance yesterday. I was going to say, what's been your assessment? Of, it felt like yesterday he settled really into this format. He started slow. He didn't hit a double in his opening game. It was zero from nine. And 
I think me and both Chris Mason looked at each other and went, well, he's going to struggle in this group here. This is a good quality group. But then he came back with a 90 plus, a 90 plus. He has tailed off towards the back end of days. Has he played this long before? These are questions we just do not know at this period of time. These are five, six hour days of darts, including the practice and preparation beforehand. There's a lot of things to manage and get right, but he's doing a lot right. He's in the running for this. And a Group B would be a successful campaign so far for Stephen Johnson. Most certainly. Let's have a look then at the outright betting here as we look ahead to day three. Changing the market, perhaps not surprised. Alex Spellman's now the outright favourite to win this group. He's got those couple of points advantage on the board at the moment and that will be the reason as to why. But that last game from Luke Little had just really set down a marker and set the bar. And I'd be a little concerned if I was the rest of the group just in case because we know he can repeat that and repeat it regular. Remember BeGambleAware.org. It's that time of the programme where we have a look at what Matthew Edgar has selected. This is Prime Times Picks. Now, I said that you were being very soft yesterday by only going with 5-1, to one, so you decided to bring that ambition back up and you're going for a 10-1 to one treble. I'm surprised when you look at certain 180 markets because the amount of 180s we're getting from players at the moment and certainly with a lot of these games expecting to go close we're going to get a lot of legs so a lot more opportunity to get 180s i think the 180s on the overs is the way to go because this is a really big 180 hitting group and hey we start with a big match right from the get-go alexander Merckx up against alex spellman we are going to see this group develop right away and we're going to get questions answered straight away i said about people that played well on one day and then bad on the other and then opposite flipped around some people playing well on not the other we've got the consistency of Alex Spellman here against which version of Alexander Merckx we've seen he's one of those players that had a much higher average on day one compared to day two how does he respond to that we're going to find out shortly ready for some darts always ready for a bit more dart in action well, let's get the darty party and Pompey underway. It's Wednesday here at the Super Series. It sees Alexander Merckx up against Alex Spellman. This man's going to make his way down to the commentary box to join Chris Mason. Hello, Chris. Good morning, Henry. And we are looking forward to a real high-quality day of darts. Is this Group A done and dusted? Or can somebody... Find a way to chase that man down, Alex Spellman, who didn't have it all his own way yesterday, but still ended the day on top. Luke Littler, who really did produce in that final match of the day, was on target for a well, it was a big average anyway, the 107.36, but it was looking likely early on that you could possibly set a first like record it's here. To throw first. That is a personal best at the Super Series for Luke Littler. I'm not sure how long that will last. I can see him beating that this week, but you called 85. it yesterday, Matt. You said we were going to have 105 plus at some point today. You said it was going to come from Luke Littler, and he didn't let you down. Yeah, there's nothing surprising for me about that performance of Luke Littler. 100. It was one of those where you knew it was going to come at some point. And you normally find that it's against a player who's got 92. a bit of pace and a bit of rhythm about them, and also someone who was playing well, like Nathan Gervan was. He was running at a 93 average going into that last game. And you can just sort of forget about the the little 100. distractions that you get within a game. When you're playing someone who's playing well, you just get lost in it. Michael Van Gerwen, Michael Smith. These guys are the easiest players to play on the planet because you just expect. So you don't need to look at the board. You don't need to follow the game. You don't need to think about anything else because you're in that mode of expectation that anything's a bonus when they miss. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is the third meeting this week between these two. The aggregate scoreline. Well, it was 4 3 to Alex Lucar, 161. Merck's. Uh, that couldn't have been. Not sure. 4 3 to Spellman 97. on Monday, where he averaged 81 26. Had a couple of 177s in there. Merck's averaged 
Five, four. seven, and then yesterday, it came from nowhere really. It was a 4-3 win for Merckx, who averaged 96-71, and that was 60. on the back of a, a real tough Alexander day for Merckx. Alexander 141. Big drop-off in performance 65. yesterday from Alexander Merckx. 88 on day one, dropped off to an 83 yesterday, just winning nine legs. Four of them were against this man. It all started from a, a ropey end to the opening leg Two. where he missed a lot of doubles. Alexander the opposite 76. of today where he's not scored very well. But will he fix the problem and be the total north and south sort of version of the first leg. day Alexander. two? And it is a nice 76 finish there for Alexander Merckx. And I feel I need to just go back to that conversation very quickly before my Twitter explodes with people sending in saying, how can you say Michael Smith and Alex is the first? Are the easiest players to play? I said the word play. I didn't say beat. I said play. Because when it comes to beating them, not many people do that. 84. Well, you know what you're getting. And then you just don't follow the game. You don't read situation. You know, when you're playing someone who's 44. missing a little bit, you end up starting to count the misses, which then makes you think about misses. Yeah, you tend to dwell on opportunities missed. 136. Well, with that, if you get a dart, you're quite grateful. <laughs> But then it's loaded with pressure, isn't it? 140. I'd say it is the closer you get to the win. At first, it's, okay, there's one, there's two. And as that winning line gets closer and closer, that's when the pressure starts to build because... 125. It's a good win, a good scalp. Which is what this group will be feeling right now about Alex Spellman. 40. Technically, Alex Alexander Merckx can still win the group. So a win here will keep him alive in that. A loss here will completely eliminate his chances of being able to win this group. So we could potentially give Alexander Merckx the mark a pen in this game if he's not able to get over the line. But another big scoring leg here from... 45, Alex Alice Yukar, 22. Last visit, 136, 125, 134. Game shot on no the second leg, Alex Not even you. Watching your stream last night, where you Alexander did through first game on taking on players on uh, YouTube. One hundred. Nothing wrong with the finishing, pal. It was naughty, that wasn't yeah. it? Naughty doubling. Pretty much every every leg was double double or the ball. One hundred and nineteen. I feel like I've got to bring this story up as well because we discussed luck, didn't we, in the week and what what is unlucky? Good, good fortune. <laughs> well, if you want to know what unlucky is, I've got the perfect definition of this. This what morning I walked down to the Super Series <laughs> and I walked down in glorious sunshine, not cloud in the 58. sky, clear blue skies. Fifteen minutes later, Chris Mason walks in absolutely soaked Bruised to the skin. <laughs> bruised because he's been hailed on. <laughs> and I'm like, what happened to you? Well, I decided to go out on the bike this morning before work. And then cycle in and... As Matt mentioned, I looked out the bedroom window and I thought, wow, what a glorious day. What a lovely morning for a... I don't know, maybe a, a, a quick ten-miler on the bike. Oh, dear. When I mean a change in the weather, it was all, the wind and the hail was so bad, it was almost impossible to cycle against said wind and hail. 43, Alex Yukar, 32. Game shot on the third well, leg, back Alex back Spellman. 13s from Spellman. Just when I begin to question, will he... I mean, I... I have not seen Both like Alex anything to first. Game in on. stats that I've tried to dig out about this man to suggest his ceiling is, is as high as what we've seen. 
And he, he has no, started you know, a lot of matches. I mean, he does end up sort of coming back towards that 90 mark every time. 100. But there's been points like now where he's well into the hundreds. Yeah, I've been really impressed with what I've seen here from Same. Alex Spellman. I, I honestly thought he was going to find it tough going. And I know he's, I've, I've watched him on the CDC and I know he's got loads of experience, but 100. I thought he was going to find this tough, but it's been completely the opposite. He's, he's pretty much led from, well, he has led from day one. Well, we've only got to look at those debuts, which is what concerned me, because when he spoke in his interview about coming here and he when he practices, and this is something we're seeing a lot with players now, where before we'd be like, oh, this is to win this match in the Alex first Darwin, round, 167. match play, you know, when you do those moments in your head. He was saying that he was doing them about this. So to get an invite here, he was really proud of that. And then I look at when he played on the PDC Pro Tour and he had his debut on there, he averaged 82 and 80. 133. And thought, if there is going to be a weakness, it's probably going to be the early days because yep. he might just get a little bit 85. too excited and just get a bit nervous. It's top of the table. And this is for a third consecutive. Game show on the fourth leg. Alex Spellman. Oh, wow. 105.37 the average. This is stunning. An indifferent opening leg. And then he's literally just gone through the gears. Fifth leg, Alexander did do first. Game on. He's playing the type of darts that you know right now there's people sat at home who are 45. sponsors, managers, people like that who watch the Super Series. And they'll all be sat up right now going, oh, we might have a player on our hands here. We certainly have. 140. And like before, where the averages have come down towards the latter 100. stages of matches, this one's going up. And I do actually know that's a fact, because I had a chat with one of them yesterday who says, what can you tell me about Alex Spellman? He is getting attention. Didn't like that first start, though. It sort of came out of the hands of the flicky, but what a way to put it. Right, good mental strength there. Henry did say... 125. Will we see that 107 get beaten? We are on course to see it get beaten here. Alex Spellman, 108. Well, if the trend of 13 darters continue, it will get beaten. 40. Right on cue. <laughs> 28. I think the concerning thing for me there, though, is the average of Alexander Merckx. Considering he's not getting darts at doubles, to be averaging 73, that shows that probably his actual reflective average is in the 60s. Yeah, when it's a scoring average, isn't it? And it's certainly 140. on course for a 80. Super Series PB for Spellman. If he gets rid of this here. It might not be a 13, but it is a 14. And that is a stunning shot on the match. performance. Oh. oh, Hinks actually realising the double 10 was in. An average for Spellman. He beats his... He beats his personal best average by around about six points or so. There you see, 105.76, didn't hit a 180. But the doubling, very, very good. Four from nine can Sydney missed the vast majority of those in the opening leg of the match. From one nil down, 13, 13, 13. And a 14 dart break of throw gets the job done. He moves on to 18 points. All right, when we come back after a short break will be Nathan Gervin against Kenny Nayans.
Welcome back to the Super Series where we've seen an impressive start to the day for Alex Spellman averaging 105.76 on route to a 4-1 success against Alexander Merckx, the man who is the favourite to go on and win the group, kicking off with a performance worthy of that tag. Next up for us, it's Nathan Gerwin had a much improved day two here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. He takes on Kenny Nayans and this is being watched by Chris and Matt. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, talk of Spellman, he was... Four to seven to win this Group A before the off. There'll be none of that available, that's for sure. Not after that performance. A personal best there from Alex Spellman. Man, Nathan Gervin has been in and around numbers like that. I mean, his, his running average is close to 89, isn't it, for the two days so far? Nathan Gervin yesterday, much improved, 88.63. He was 82.36 on day one. Kenny Nyams dropped right off yesterday. He was 85 on day one, and then dropped down to a 77. Yeah, I think his, his running average is... First leg is Nathan to throw first. Well, it'd be 81-ish, will not it? Nathan yesterday, averaging 93 going into that last game. 93! And then dropped down to the 80, but he only had one dart at the double in that game as well. And he actually started the game really well against one Luke Little, Littler, 40. but it was like he didn't have much resilience to what was an absolute barrage of treble 20s. Well, for the vast majority of that match, 121. He, was, he was up around the 150, well, he was in between 115 and 118, Luke. I mean, it was a stunning performance. The 41. opening three legs were a 10, 15, and 14. And in that situation, you can sometimes end up finding yourself just ad admiring your opponent's 59. work, which we know you shouldn't do, but sometimes it's almost impossible. 100. I think Kenny will be disappointed with his efforts of yesterday, not winning a single game. And... Only picking up eight legs across the day, and the performance just... His best performance of the day was game one, and that was only an 83, which normally Kenny would be expecting. That would be his weakest performance Nathan of the Carl, day. 128. Yeah. I thought this man bounced back well yesterday. Played some very good stuff. 88. Kenny Ricard, 160. It's a lot smoother. And that showed in, in the results, of course, winning... 40. Nathan Ocar, 40. Of his five games. His defeat. Game shown the first leg. Nathan Gerban. Spellman. And in that wonderful performance from Littler. And it's okay to have a bad day. Everyone's yep. going to have them. So you certainly Kenny have plenty across a year, and especially if you're playing as much as the guys are. It's how you respond to them. And that's why we're just casting our eye a little bit at Kenny Nyams today, because we'll 57. learn a little bit more about his game. And see how he bounces back from that disappointment of yesterday. Yeah, for me yesterday, he seemed to just hit a bit of a brick wall, didn't he? He looked, he looked tired and just out of sorts. And normally, he's one of the 100. big 180 merchants, isn't he? But yesterday, really did struggle in that. Well, he struggled in every department. 84. Fifty-seven. Ninety-six. Yeah, Nathan started the day yesterday with a four-nil blitz of Alexander Merckx, where he averaged ninety-five, forty-three, a couple of one-eighties and a one-six-eight, and four out of seven on the doubles. And beat Kenny. 4-1, and we were beginning to think, here we go, he's on a bit of a roll, and, and then Spellman pinched one really off him, 4-3. 44, Nathan Ricard, 120. He bounced back with a 4-0 win with another 90-plus average, 92-49 against 60. Stephen Nathan Johnston, Ricard, 144. And of course that match against Littler.
44. Nathan Lucas, 60. Really, he was just a, a spectator. He had the best seat in the house, though, for that one. Very low dart, that one from Nathan. He just glances over to the score. 40. Kenny Lucas, 100. He flight again on that last dart. I think it was the flight as well that sort of caused Dragged the bounce out. Him. Yeah. Probably a look there. He, he does watch 20. his games back to seeing that situation to move across the hockey to open up the bed to avoid the flight. Ten. That was definitely Kenny in and out. And it's something 40. he's good at as well when he moves. We've seen him find the target many times. We've complimented him a lot on that so far this week. But this was what Kenny Nahum did at the start 10. of yesterday, which sort of began that era of negativity, missing the three darts in hand and giving his opponent more opportunities. Something we're seeing a lot more, that three double Eight. one. Ignoring Kenny Lucar, 20. Double two approach. That's seven darts for two now. Being shot on the second leg, Kenny Nayans. That was horrid. It's gone. They're like Nathan done. to throw first. Yeah, Game on. Be changed. Move on. 80. And you see with the younger players that opening game of the day 45. really does impact on their level of performance throughout the remainder of the day. I think you've hit the key word there, level 44. of performance, because... They're judging performance. They're not like what we'd be doing where we're only judging our wins. They're more or less what just the tracking their averages rather than the points. Yeah. yeah. They're more worried about performance than, 95. than, than victories. And I don't get that with darts. It's one of the only sports I can think of where the statistics matter more than the result. I've never once heard 45. in a football interview than stick the camera in the face of Jose Mourinho and says, well, you won that 1-0, but you only had 34% possession there. Yeah, it's what you do with that possession, isn't it? 52. I've genuinely seen people post on social medias and different places where they've gone, oh, I won title tonight. Oh, what did you average? What did you win, or how did there, you? Who did you beat? There it's... was there was one on Facebook the other day where someone won a like a local tournament. Said oh, I only dropped five legs all day, but car, really disappointed with my performance. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you've won a tournament, you've only dropped five legs, and you're not happy. Eighty-six. Can you car one hundred and twenty? Should have said, well, I'll, I'll do a percentage, and the percentage I was below. The performance I was happy with. I'll return 40. to the organisers and prize 52. money. I'll give to the, I'll give to my opponents. You just wouldn't do it, would you? Game shot on well, the third leg. Nathan Gerber. Favoured tops, but finds double sixteen. Again, body language. Negative and. Four for Kenny to throw first. On. Game on. Take the head. You're two one up. You're halfway there. This stage now. 60. Just got to dig in and think, right, I just want to get this one. 57. Just took over to Twitter to have a look at our viewers this morning. Do get in touch at MSS Dart, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And also 45. put in the tag at the Edgar 501 if you want to come through onto my screen so that we can see your comments and queries. We've got a repeat tweet here from somebody who tweeted in earlier on in the week and somebody who actually came on my stream last night, Travis Dorsey. Good morning to you. 59. Waking up again around 4am in the morning to come and join us to support Alex Spellman. He's hoping that he gets through to Saturday night. We... He started well for you, Travis. He's doing you proud. Started more 100. than well, winning pool one with 105.76 average. He's on to 
18 points. Four clear of his ne nearest rival. Who will be playing in our next match. Luke Littler will be playing Stephen Johnston. I just thought before I told you actually that Travis got up at four o'clock this morning to join us. I probably should have told 26. you that there are actually two four o'clocks in a day. <laughs> That's the, the chat from America, isn't it? So it to be it would be four AM. Can you recall ninety seven? We've all done it for big fights. 73, Nathan McCarthy. Probably 40. done it for the wrestling. Getting shot on the fourth flag, Nathan Gerban. Very recently, actually, WrestleMania. And it just shows the, the way of the growth of the sport over there in America at the moment that they're willing to get up at that sort Before of time. Nathan, and show the the sport they're man. You've had a really in depth look at that, haven't you? In regards to the countries that are showing a real interest in our sport. Yeah, America and Canada really flying the flag on that one. We talk about Germany, 57. Holland and Belgium, where Kenny Nyons is from, as being hotbeds and developing territories. But when we look at the potential of the growth one in America, it's 40. more than five times the size yep. in the interest, according to Google, with darts in America and Canada. 82. It's just with the influx of players 57. doing doing stuff on the on the main tour and obviously in the seniors tour with David Cameron winning the Masters and 140. Henry Gates winning the Champions of Champions. And great stuff from Matt Campbell and Danny Baggish and of course fifty six really put down by John Park, the three time world champion. He's Jeff Smith. Yeah, Jeff Smith, another one. Danny Lowby. 72. Nathan McCall, 148. And now Alex Spellman. It's gone from maybe Darren Young yep. to a short list now of potential candidates, which is really good progress for the side of the world. Can you recall on tour now as well. Which yeah, the CDC is fabulous. Probably the next development for somewhere like Belgium. We've seen in the past, like the German Super League and things like that come through to help that territory. Yeah, Nico did a whole feature on that, didn't he? He spent a week there. And it's very similar to this in terms of its intensity. Eliminates the option there of going for the double 19, which tells you he wouldn't have gone for it anyway. So, not a bad route. Got his own way. His way he might be back to the practice room here because Nathan Gervin getting shot in the match. Nathan wraps Gervin. the match up, and Kenny Nyams. Unfortunately for him, it is more of the same today. He'll be hoping to get that turned around before we go into our Group B and C criteria, which is somewhere Nathan Gervin can still put himself in that conversation. He's just a couple of points behind Stephen Johnson, who will be playing next against Luke Littler.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Nathan Gerben has got the better Kenny Nains by four legs to one in our second match of the day. Third up then for us, it's the final game of the first round and it's going to see Luke Littler in action. He takes on Stephen Johnston and that's being watched by Matt and Chris. Thank you, Henry. Well, opportunity for Johnston to close the gap on Littler and consolidate his place in Group B. Or a chance for Littler to try and chase down Spellman. Spellman already making a winning start to the day. So he's on 18 points. Littler currently on 14 with this game in hand. This match will complete the first cycle of five. He had some success against... First leg is Stephen to throw first. Littler. Game on. Did Johnston. Defeated him on day one. 4-2 with a 91-04. 66% on the doubles. 100. However, revenge for Luke yesterday. Himself winning 4-2 and 80% on the doubles. 59. They made Littler a 1-3 favourite for this one. No surprise. 45. I do find it weird when you see the ages come up because this is one of those situations where... 57. We're looking at them in what I'd call a darting age. And in a darting age, Luke Littler feels... 60. ...so much older than Stephen Johnson because we've seen him so much and he's travelled the world playing the game now. Winning titles, left, right, and centre. Where Stephen Johnson, we're just sort of seeing him emerge through this week. And in a darting age, we've got you'd almost flip him the other way around. The 34-year-old you'd think would be Luke Littler. Yeah, and that's sort of mid 30s. I think is almost 95. prime for a for a player. Although we've seen players, of course, a lot older than that. One that springs to mind straight away, of 60. course, is Peter Wright, who was. 49 when he won his first world title. Glenn Duran. Yeah. Didn't win a title till he broke 40. I just think that's down to how you 58. manage the emotional aspect of the sport. And life, probably. 100. Ninety eight. I suppose Steve that's why we're so wary of the, the youngsters because they've got a, they've got to deal with the roller coaster of emotions that the darts first will Steven provide. Johnson. You can be the most talented player in the world and and it still not happen for you at senior level. And it in its dealing Second with Luke, that you throw first, game on. Showing that bounce back ability. What are the legs? Oh, his first one of those of the day. Don't think it'll be the last. He'll get plenty more of those. That's his 18th 180 so far this week. 52. And Stephen Johnson, it's going to be said, his finishing is a real strength and a real key of his game. On day one, he was around about the 33%. 56. 11 hits from 34, but yesterday he really raised that. And he had 14 hits from just 29 attempts. So 59. Very close to 50%. Yesterday. And if we add all that together and then 61. remember that actually on his debut game, he had that bit of nerves there where he had those nine darts missed at a double. One out of them, fortunately. Very, very healthy return of around about 45%. Yeah. yeah that's outstanding. 119. I mean, that's really, with Little, that's probably the, 45. the only Luka aspect 85. of his game over the first two days of play I could be critical about. And then that would be a little harsh. 65. One hundred and forty. Luka, 20. Good bit of pressure. 
Game shot on the second leg, Luke Little. Drama on the doubles there. 17 dart hold, one apiece, 180 in the leg. They'd like Stephen to throw first. Game on. We often get asked the questions, what are the players waiting for? Well, 96. You may have noticed we don't have a marker on stage, so it's done remotely in the production gallery. So that 100. 10 second gap in between legs just allows that to be reset. 100. One hundred and eighty. Never in doubt after dart one. So to expect more. <clears throat> you have to wait ages. Fifty-eight. You won't leave you waiting long if you're looking for one eighties. Luke Littler, big power scorer. Fifty-seven. Stephen Johnson does have these. 16. Chunky stumpies. Didn't take me long. Mark that off your bingo card. Which will mean he won't get a lot of 180s. He's only had two so far over his first 59. 10 matches. There won't be a lot of room in there, but he did attempt the three bullseyes, which 100. was a Look bizarre approach with those darts because I'm surprised he's more wasn't than it? one. <laughs> They're looking at the 25 at least to go tops tops a very modern 81. way so even look at 87 no five game shot on the third leg Stephen johnston getting used to that roar from johnston an 18 dart hold an 87 on the ball well you mentioned the ball we got one there didn't he four leg luke to throw first game on Because I like double 16. The 105 for me is... 59. The 57 to leave. 48. And then I'll the 19. 54, 32. But 100. In terms of percentage-wise, I'd probably say the 25 tops tops is the more obvious route. 81. Oh, and the player that we were discussing the other day who has his own way 16. of going on shots was Reese Robinson, who produced that Bull 18 ball. Got to be one of my favourite shots of the year. One of them, the series. If you want to get in touch with us, let us know what your favourite moments have been or if you have any questions or any kind of general chit-chat, you can get in touch with us. The Edgar 501 on 57. Twitter. It will come straight through to that laptop, which is in the comms box, open and ready. You just let 100. us know where you're Look watching your car, from. 164. 164. Are you in work with your little earbuds in? 124. Stephen car, 141. Couple of tabs open so you can flick between if the boss comes past. I actually put it on my phone and have my earbuds in in the gym when I'm not here. Just to keep up to speed with what's going on. 24. Look at your car 40. For a level game. One more opportunity. Game shot on the taken. fourth leg. Luke Littler. He did run the risk there of hearing that Stephen Johnson come on if he'd have took the 17. He'd have been in big trouble, not just for this game, but for the entire group. This is a big game for Luke Littler. This leg, Stephen, to throw first. Game on. There was a lot of pressure. Could have quickly become 3-1. 59. It could have been Stephen throwing for the match. However, a troublous visit. Should be punished. Do you not worry watching the Super Series with the earphones in when Henry's on commentary? 100. Saw him in the VT, didn't we? We got quite excitable. 44. 
it's usually handy when I'm just going down for a maybe a PB deadlift or something. Get a scream from Henry in my, in my ears. One hundred. Thirty. Forty-three. There's a couple of questions, really, that is posing here for this slight decrease in performance for Luke Littler. Is it the time of day? Day three, bit of a T coming in this early, or is this the situation weighing a little bit heavy because he knows he can't afford to lose this and give Alex Spellman a four-point cushion with just four games to go in this group? Fifty-six. Stephen Carl, one hundred and fifty-three. Combination of all of the above on day one, which you tend to sort of give the players a little bit of a pass out, especially 59. those on debut. He averaged 83-89. 12 darts at a double, 94. so that's brought the average way down. Yesterday, 88-71. 54. Look your car, 102. 80.34. But this is a big moment. He's going to get a dart. It's a dart at tops. Game shot on the fifth Big leg. moment. Littler. Big dart for Luke Littler. He breaks the throw of Stephen Johnson with his fourth tongue plus finish of the week. Worry there for so me. So take Luke to third first. Game on. Johnson had 21 darts in that leg. One of them was at a double. 100. I took out 102 for a 21 dart break of throw. 53. Played 10 games so far. Luke Littler. Half of them have been averages over the 90. One of them's been over the 100. 140. Two of them are over the 90 have been 99s. So very close to being the 100. But as you mentioned, 85. all those great stats, none of them have come in game one. It's always got better as the session's gone on. Which you tend to find with players 97. like Luke Lilla, who play a lot on feel and rhythm. Yeah, rhythm, yeah. I was just going to say that. That is very much the case. 60. They, Look at your car, 164. to reach a, a peak point. Ninety-two tops. You know how long do you see on the pro tour? People like a Michael Smith will go out first round, or they win it. Well, yeah, you look at him on the the recent Euro tour. He was look your car seventy-two. Scrapping and scraping. Adam Warner had a dart to beat him, and then he stepped in and took out one one six to to win the match, and sixty-six. Then goes on to win the tournament. And how many times have we seen that at the Worlds? Players tend to have to dodge a bullet or two en route. 45, look at your car, 6. Game shot on the match, Luke Littler. Luke Littler starts his day successfully. He hasn't played his best darts in game one, but he's won all three of them, and that is the most important thing. It's points on the board, and it keeps it really open for the neutral at that top of the table clash. Luke Littler and Alex Spellman will be coming up in game number three, but Alex Spellman is coming up next. He'll be taking on a dangerous customer here in Nathan Gervin.
this is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Welcome back to the Motors Super Series. Uh, Luke Littler has kicked off his day with a 4-2 success against Steve Johnson, helped by that 102 checkout to turn the game on its head. So every player has played one match so far today, so there's a good chance to have a little bit of a checkup on the league table. And as you can see, no change at the top. Alex Spellman still with a two-point lead over Luke Littler, but they play in their third cycle of matches today. So still plenty to play for as far as the top of the group is concerned. Concerned. And it is Alex who's involved in our next match. He takes on Nathan Gervin, who won his opening game of the day. Both 4 1 winners in their opening match. And in the commentary box, Chris Mason and Matthew Ecker. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, this is the biggest game of the day for Nathan Gervin for sure. After seeing Stephen Johnston lose to Luke Littler, there's a chance for him to move into third position. If you're joining us for the first time, the winner of Group A gets Thursday and Friday off and goes straight into Saturday night's final. Positions two and three go into Group B, and that's five players in that, with the top three qualifying for Saturday night's final over the course of Thursday and Friday night. Positions four, five, and six into the much tougher Group C, which is played over Thursday and Friday afternoons now. And it's only the top two. First leg is Alex to throw first. 60% chance of qualifying out of Game on. Group B and a 30% chance of qualifying out of Group C. But it's not been a happy hunting ground for Gervin against Spellman, has it? 24. It's kind of been a bit of a mixed bag in general for Nathan Gervin, but... I do feel like what this could it? be the time for him. And Alex Spellman feels the same. He was nodding along after the first start. He expected that one to go in. Well, Nathan, knowing Nathan as well as I do, he's probably been in that practice room. 63. Been in 180s like they're going out of fashion. I'm sure they'll be fully aware of the 100. ability. Just not been the application in the most part, although there were some really good signs yesterday. One of the dangers after you have such a big average and a big performance like Alex Spellman did in the first game, 105.76 is when you come to the next game, whatever you do, it just doesn't feel as good and you feel like you're playing worse all the time. 97. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really strange scenario. I think we, I think we discussed this the back end of, of last week where you're actually under more pressure after playing absolutely brilliantly where 95 that's Nathan, the, the you can't weird element of darts, I suppose because you're you're trying to not just replicate that in performance but you then believe oh, I can play better than that and I think that's where 88. the pressure comes but this is a beautiful leg he's doing to Spellman what Spellman did to Merckx. Remember, he lost the first leg to Merckx and then produced three thirteens and a fourteen dart. Hundred and five point seven six average. This is what he's done a lot against Spellman. His missed doubles. Thirty-two. Alex Yukar sixty. Getting shot on the first leg, Alex Spellman. You mentioned that it's kind of like that first game. Well, Spellman beat him 4 2 on Monday, and they, they both averaged 79. Second leg, Nathan, did you throw first? Game on. Both missed a, a fair few doubles. 
100. Yesterday, Alex, like I mentioned a little earlier, defeated Nathan 4-3, both players averaging well into the 90s. 85. But again, missed doubles were costly. I'm watching Alex quite a lot in this one. He's really drawing my eye 100. to his mannerisms. I've never seen him so animated. Now, granted, this is only the 11th game I've seen of him, and the previous 10 was this week. But he's very animated up there. He's very reactive to the dark. We saw him sort of waving his fingers around there after winning that one, as if to be a bit like a one-man Mexican wave. 57. Eighty-three. Imperative for me, Nathan holds here. Eighty-three. The longer this run goes of Spellman and Littler doing their jobs, the more it builds to that match. Game number three for the pair, lap number three, where that game could be crucial. However, the way Alex Spellman's 45. going about his business, Nathan a Carl, little, little win might not be enough because Spellman is picking up the leg difference. 64. So even if Spellman is to win this one, Luke Littler is going to be hoping that Gervan can pick up some legs. 58. Nathan Khan, 97. Another opportunity here. He missed three darts in the last leg. Game he will the not miss one leg. here. Nathan a nice Gerber. clean 97 as he looks up to say, where was you three minutes ago when I could have broke the throw? Yeah, I've been 2-0 up instead of one apiece. Third leg, Alex, to throw first. Game on. Eighty-five. That would be a finish as well. That would have drawn the attention of Luke Littler. He'd have been happy with that. Every leg will be a bonus to 100. him at the moment. Fifty-eight. Sixty-six. Oh, they were a couple of flyers. I, I get where Nathan's mindset is because on each of their two meetings, he would have ninety-five. Would have felt like he could have comfortably won the match, and that can have an impact on your performance 96. against a player that you think, "Hang on a minute, I should be winning these games." I'm not performing, and and then the more that goes on, the more it becomes part of the mindset. Ninety-six. Just don't play your own game. You tend to get drawn into your opponent opponent's match. Ninety-three. Alice Hill, Carl, one hundred and sixty-seven. And that mindset will be here. We go again. Alex Spellman, top of the table, and has been pretty much all the way through this group 50. A, and Nathan he Carl will be going into lap number 12 of fixtures. He's had 14 180s. He's not had a tumblers finish yet. The only player this week not to have registered one. Wow. 94. Alex Carl, 117. Here, one. Here comes one now. Yeah. You know it, don't you? Ooh. Wow. Seventy-seven. Nathan Carr, fifty-two. Three darts to break the throw in the opening leg. Only let two more passing by. That is 20. five darts now. Alex He's Hill had Carr, to break 40. to take the lead. Alex Spellman, a bit of fortune, but in his hands now. 
Game shot on the third leg. Alex Spellman <laughs> regains the lead. He has dodged five darts to be broken. In two different legs. Nathan should be. Four leg Nathan to throw the first. Game on. Control. And that first dart was a reactive dart. 62. As that rushed, almost forced throw rears its head. And this is where we see Alex Spellman sort of assert himself in previous games. Well, this, is, this is where maybe the experience of being able to recognize when your opponent is suffering or what struggling or both. I do believe Alex Spellman has already guaranteed his place in New York for the 45. PDC World Series events and the North American Championship, which means he's going to have a crack at potentially getting to Alessandra Palace. 125. He is able to get through that North American Championship. But from what I'm seeing of him so far, he could be a real danger to those top players that are coming over from the PDC to New York 45. this summer. Nathan well, Carl, especially his, his mentality, his mental strength is, is just not up for debate. He has been 94. mentally outstanding. He doesn't panic. He doesn't affect, he doesn't allow or let, or let what's happened previously affect his 99. performance. Nathan Carl, 40. Game shot on the fourth leg, Nathan Gerban. He had two darts to hold the throw and hit them both. It's the dart and the double to break it that's becoming the issue here for Gerban. But that was a 13 dart for Nathan. Like Alex to throw first. Once game again, on. A level game against the computer game designer, a man who's worked on one of your favourite games, Fortnite. <laughs> Fifty-eight. I, I only know what it is because. Charlotte's little fella, Reuben. Fortnite 81. Mad. you got the pyjamas, haven't you? No, but I think he has. And they, they definitely won't fit me. He's nine. <laughs> it's quite a lot of dart players actually enjoy a game of Fortnite. 27. I believe Josh Payne plays Fortnite. The best player I've ever seen at Fortnite is Ryan Searle. He is ridiculously good at yeah, Fortnite. Yeah, but he's a gamer, isn't he? 96. I've I've never had a games console. Wow. No. Jeffrey does one. Does a bit of streaming, playing computer yes. games. Yes. Apparently he's he's very good at that. Whatever it is, I'm not sure how you're good at computer 41. games. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how that works. Multi-million pound business now. Millionaires from playing computer yeah. games. Yeah. One hundred. And there's several platforms, isn't there, like Kick and Twitch and obviously YouTube and... 100. Huge YouTube fan. There's even sports books open now on people playing games of FIFA against each other. 60. Fact on YouTube the last couple of nights I've been watching the World Rally Championships from the mid eighties. Heyday of that type of motorsport with Group B. One hundred and forty. Nathan Car one hundred and sixty four. Another one of those. We'll leave the ball. And there's another dart. The breakthrough. Nathan Car ninety six. There's been a huge gap in Averages throughout, and that that remains, buddy. It's going to be Spellman. It's going to lead three two here. Sixty. If Nathan Car twenty five, he can hit the double eighteen. More opportunities here for Gervan to break the throw. Game he shot missed the three. Flag. He missed Gervan. two this time. Alex Spellman does not get away with the situation, and Gervan breaks the throw and takes the lead for the first time in this match. And you mentioned YouTube. Six a lot of our viewers might be first. joining us on. on YouTube today. If you are, just 
have a look at the buttons underneath your screen. There is a thumbs up button. Press that one. 44. That just lets YouTube know that you're enjoying the channel and enjoying the darts today. And right next to that, there's a little button that says subscribe. If that's still red, it means you're not subscribed. If you just give that a press, you'll be subscribed you and you'll be aware of all the upcoming content and lives. 104 live matches every single week, along with highlights and one out of interviews and bonus content. Also, if you're watching by your chosen bookmaker, come along to the action. If you have any issues with gambling, be gambleaware.org. Fifty nine. Fun stop stop. Don't be doing your conquers. Big weekend ahead. One hundred. Well, real opportunity now for Nathan to give himself a bit of space. Got to come down. Cover nineteen's the shot. You see the animation again from Alex Spellman. I've not seen him so not as engaged and focused with that forwards task. Very reactive to the darts in this match. What a right on cue. Perfect timing to get your 15th. But again, reactive. Very animated. Well, he'll be aware that he's... 46. Under Alex O'Connor, 120. That was a real messy visit. Could be. Oh, I was going to say 300 in six. One thing 44. he is very good at Nathan is Carl, reading 120. the deciding legs. Game shot in the match. Nathan well, We're not going to go to a deciding leg because Nathan Gervin, who struggled with the doubling throughout that one, produces a beautiful 1 1 8 and another one of those darts that you have to make the smallest of adjustments around a blocker. An average of exactly 92 1 8 is 4 out of 11 on the doubles. Now moves in to third position. When we come back, Luke Littler back in action against Alexander Merckx.
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Yes, you can join us every single Saturday evening here at the Super Series. Join our matches, we'll flash up a QR code on screen and you can be able to book your tickets. Alternatively, it's dartshop.com. TV. Well, before the break, we saw Nathan Gervin rack up his second win of the day and consign Alex Spellman to defeat a 4-2 win for the Scott, helped by that 118 checkout to get the job done. That means next up for us, it's Luke Littler against Alexander Merck to win for Littler. And it's all level on points. Here's Chris. Here's Matt. Yeah, a win, a 4-2 or better for Littler. And he will go top. It's a position that Spellman's pretty much occupied from the second cycle of games on day one. Yesterday, these two locked horns, and it was a 4 0 win. A real poor performance for Merckx on that occasion. Didn't get going at all. Littler won 4-0 with a 83 and a half average. First leg Much is Luke, better game between first. the two on, game on Monday. Littler winning 4-3. 88 and a half the average for Mercks. 99-64 and 50% on the doubles with 4 one eighty. 140. And he would have been buoyed by seeing Nathan Gervin defeat 100. Spellman in our last one. I think there's a play here. I'd be looking at the five to six here on the minus one point five on Luke Littler. I think yep. four nil what one two at five to six is an absolute bargain of a price. Absolutely. Sixty. And the aggregate score lines would suggest that, wouldn't it? And there's your QR code on the screen if you want to come down and join us on Saturday. Give that a scan on your smartphones. I'll give you all the information. There's Henry's little tungsten T-Rex in the in the middle. 100. Yeah, Look your down car, in Portsmouth on London Road. Hotel around the corner. Doors open at 6.30. Game shot on the first leg. <laughs> Look, I, I, I don't know what it is about that finish. I just love it. One, two, one for a 12-dart hold. Yeah, doors open at 6.30. First dart thrown. At 7.30. Something like Alexander in the third first. So Game on. Unique venue here at the Modus Live Lounge. 97. No doubt you'll get to get a selfie with Henry as well. Myself and Matt will be floating around, as will all the other players. 140. Come and join us if you're not tech savvy like me and don't understand those QR code 54. things head over to www.dartshop.tv and reserve your ticket 60 when Luke Littler starts like this I think that highly of him 60 that I start thinking about what are the records What's the record of this series? What's the record overall? What's the record this week? Because you just expect him to continue like this. 97. Yeah, well, we were very much like that in the final match of the session last night where he produced that 107.36. Just has that air of confidence and ability. We 52. I suppose we can sometimes forget he's... A very young player. 
60. Look your car 162. Player has this much ability. Expectation levels are high. And we've seen such incredible 100. performances from him. Alexander already. Car 130. So it's kind of his own fault of being so good. Yep. Sorry, not sorry. 125. <laughs> Look your car 52. Despite being so good here, that was a dart for Alexander Merckx to win the leg. Who could be swatted aside here with double 32. 20? Alexander your car 5. Lovely chance. He didn't think he was going to get. Game shot on the it. second leg. Alexander Merckx. 20 dart hold levels things up. When we talk about the stats that we're judging him by, he is top of They're the like class to first. Game on. on every single stat. He's had the best average of the week, 107.36 in victory over Nathan Gervin. 40. He's had the most ton-plus finishers. He's had five of those, topped off by a 148. He's had the most 180s of anybody this week with 20. When you look at those key power stats and he's winning all of them, You'd expect him to come through this battle 91. he's having today with Alex Spellman for that top position and win the group. Well, they, they clash, don't they, in the third cycle 100. of games. And that potentially is match of the day. Oh, in terms of the table, absolutely is. They could both be going into that game on 18 points 59. and be separated by legs. Whatever happens, neither of them can afford to lose that one heavy. 60. Heavy loss in that game would not only put big legs on your rival, it would take them off. Luka 130. Well, with, I know he has been, been beaten, but for me, the, the two players are most likely to beat Spellman is Gervin and... Littler. 59. Look at your car, 16. That's a new one on me for 130, but I like it. Two treble 19s for the double eight. Yeah, not one I've ever thought of. Game shot on the second I think I like if it would. I'd have to work the breakout down a little bit in my mind. But it brings me to a question we actually had coming on Twitter that was really interesting. It was from Fourth Ross Coleman. Good morning first. to Game you. On. Hope you're enjoying the action. It says, do you always try and leave yourself on your favourite double or you're willing to go 82. for any double? The example he used was Luke Littler going for the treble 16 to leave tops. A lot of it comes down to the situation that your opponent's in. So if Luke's opponent was on a finish or a double at that point, you probably wouldn't have gone for the treble 16 because what? 2018 leaves 59. the ball. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got a theory on that 130 attempt at 19s, his chosen double 16. is tops, of course. So he's not going for the ball on the 130. So if he starts on the trouble 20, 16. I suppose he, he does have the option of trouble 10. <clears throat> but if he goes for the 19s, misses it with his first dart, and then it's 96. a 19 with the second dart, he can go 14 for tops. 59. Yes. And I, and I, yeah, and I suppose the 57, 57, double eight, the adjustment is not huge, is it, across to the double eight from the trouble 19? It's almost at the same height. But it's not a shot I think you'd go for with his opponent on the Look finish. It eliminates the, the bullseye option. Yeah, and of course the two bites of the chariot, the trouble 20. And again there on the 68. 48 for Game double 10. on the four flag. Look, Nicola. It seems at any opportunity he will leave tops and tens. As the dark flag for a four at first. one Game win. On. But you'll see him go top of the table on leg difference. 57. He's averaging 94 and a half. Making it look ridiculously comfortable. 87. Not out of first gear, really. Well, we'll see who's comfortable in game number seven. That will be... 100. A very sizable game. Because if someone says 60. register a big win, let's say a 4-1, that's a six-leg 
swing. That will take two matches to eradicate, and at that point, there'll only be two matches left because they're both to play 13 40. games. A big win for Littler there, and he's essentially at least one foot in the door. Got to look at it realistically after that. Who's gonna, who's gonna take points off him? One hundred and forty. Possibly Nathan Gervin. One hundred and eighty. You Utah take... sixty-four. Not laying down here, Merckx. Tops though. Game Tops he gets. In the match. Luke Littler. Back to back. Fifteen darters for Luke Littler. He gets the job done and he moves on to eighteen points plus fourteen. Spellman, who's played exactly the same amount of matches, eighteen points plus twelve. There are the numbers ninety five fifty eight two one eight is very good again on the doubles and yet another ton plus finish. When we come back, Kenny Nayans faces Stephen Johnston. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we've just seen a magnificent performance from Luke Littler to get the better of Alexander Merckx by four legs to one, doing so of a 95 and a half average and that brilliant one to one checker. It makes things very, very interesting in terms of the group. So Kenny Nayans and Stephen Johnson round off our second round of fixtures for the day and this is being described by Chris Mason and Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Henry. Imperative for Stephen Johnstone to win this one to keep his hopes alive of avoiding Group C and getting in Group B. Got a feeling for Kenny in this one, which I'll try and explain why, but you're of the opposite thinking, aren't you, Matt? Yeah, quite often when we sat and we've crunched our numbers, we come up with the first same like solution. First, Kenny to third first. Where Game on. In this game, 
We have gone the opposite way. I'm flying the Stephen Johnstone flag. Well, on Monday, which feels like a long time ago now, Kenny won this tie 4-0, hit 3-1-8, an average of 88-41. That was the match that you've made reference to in terms of missed doubles, 60. which since then hasn't been the issue for Stephen Johnston. Yesterday, almost rolls reversed. 25. As Stephen won the tie for one. It's that last visit, though, that concerns me the most. 140. Kenny Nyam's two complete flyers. It's like the darts just aren't coming out of the hand. They're sort of just flopping out and to, 96. to fix that. A lot of the time, he's sort of thrusting himself at the board. Right. Stephen Johnstone just 125. seems happy and composed in himself. And he's playing with a controlled level of aggression. 99. Sixty. And he's first to the finish, despite not having the darts in this one. But Kenny's on a better one. Johnson got one and sixteen. Very unlucky there. Sixty. You can see the Kenny one. Kenny twenty. Game shot on the first leg. Kenny Nairns. Nice recovery there in that leg. The 180 and the double 10 and one will make him feel better. Stephen Johnson very quick to the board there. You heard Paul Hinks trying to get in almost like a Second horse leg, racing first. commentator there trying to get his words out. Yeah, 204. 100. Can't be done any quicker. 140. 53. And the reason I fancied Nairns for this one is 100. purely down to table positioning. Nairns knows his chances of Making group B are pretty much non-existent. Mathematically, of 91. course, still possible, but highly unlikely. Johnston is loaded with pressure and has to win. 59. Can you call 170? To take that third spot back from Nathan Gervin, and that comes with its own pressure. Oh, look at this. Wants the ball. 123, Stephen Carr, 167. 100, Kenny Carr, 47. To double his lead, to break the throw. Getting shot and on the this second leg, Kenny Nayans. Much better performance here from Kenny Nayans, far beyond what we've seen for the last couple of matches, the average right up in the three figures, 100.20, which is the 15 dark. Game on. Average. 63. Yep, 16 darts in leg one with that 204. And 14 darts are there. 60. In leg two, missed the ball, of course, for the 170 for a 12. 60. Steve Johnson, not doing too 60. much wrong. He's up sort of towards his sort of best, those sort of high 80s. 100. He's run into a very increased level of performance from Kenny Nyons, who hasn't averaged above 80 for his last five matches. 93. And he is part of the Belgian movement in the world of darts. Lots of young Belgians coming through. A very hotbed development of darts. So 60. much so, they've got a, a Euro tour. I think that's really the 
first sign of big development. 43. I think it probably really came, well, it's probably started with the Kim Hybricks, Ronnie Hybricks running the World Cup when they got to the final. 96. We then saw Dimitri Vandenberg emerge and now playing in the Premier League. Seeing more players 60. come through from Can Belgium. One, Brian Roman. Robbie Knops. Yeah, Brian Roman, of course, a former WDF number one when he was playing in the Super Series in Southampton. 65. Well, yeah, plenty Zero of success. 138. One hundred. Can you recall sixty-seven? Sixty-three. Stephen Carr thirty-eight. Two hearts for three now. Gain shot on the third leg. Stephen Johnson. A break back. Johnstone is in the. Running well, on the to move first. Game on. for a Group B place. He's currently just outside on leg difference to Nathan Gervin, who 100. has had a game more than him. If he's able to turn this one around and beat Kenny, he will be back in those Group B qualifications 96. on points. But they do have to play each other, of course. 45. In match number eight, the next couple of matches after this one are seriously important with one Spellman playing Littler, and then it will be Gervin against Johnstone. 60. 60. Stay in there. 133. Had he not hit the trouble, it would have left 170, which he's already missed the bullet in this match. 99. Can you recall 132? Do you like the 132? It's always a fun one to watch, especially when that 92. first start does go in the bullseye. He had a choice there, what double to leave. He's picked himself tops. 60. Can you recall 40? Break the throw back. After John Stone. Getting shot on the fourth leg. Broke Kenny the Nayans. throw of Kenny Nayams. It's an instant reply. And one that puts him a leg away from the match and would actually move him off the bottom Kenny of the table. The first, move Alexander Merckx down to the bottom. And one of the things you never want to do is finish bottom of the group. 140. It's off the leg he needs to win the match with a 140. His third of the match. Three scores of between a ton and 139. And 1180. He's averaging 95.82. 58%. 50 on his doubles. Stephen Johnston, 100% on his doubles. He hits him when he's getting a go. 140. Again, they're looking for 719. 87. 170 or 9 to leave 132. You mentioned Steve Johnson hits his doubles when he gets a go. 55. Well, he's only had four darts at a double today. But he's hit three of them. And that backs up what you said after... The opening match on Monday where he 96. missed nine at a double. Since then, he's been hovering around the 50%. 100. Kenny O'Carr, 120. 60. Has to come around those ones, Stephen Johnson. 100. Stephen O'Carr, 148. He's always a little bit there, expectant that that would have gone in. He's on for his own shot here. Will not go. So Kenny Nye is double 10 20. for the points. And Game gets shot the, the points. Kenny A 16 darter. Winning legs of 16, 14, 13 and 16. Gets it done very comfortably in the end.
1.4317.9 the average. As I said, the 1.180 and the finishing very tidy from both. 50% for Kenny, 100% for Johnstone. A real big game coming up next as Alex Spellman takes on Luke Littler. Welcome back to the Super Series where Matthew Edgar is alongside me up here on the balcony to assess what we have seen in the first two rounds of fixtures for the day. Before we do that, let's have a quick check of the league standings because as you can see, we now have a tie at the top of the table. We've got a tie all the way through the table. We've got a tie at the top of the table. We've got a tie in the Group B clash with three and four. We've got a clash at the bottom with five and six. It's a tie all the way down, but this tie at the top of the table needs to be decided. And it's going to be decided in this next game that's coming up, actually, because the two players in that top position are going to be going head-to-head. -head. I was going to say, there's more ties than at Mossbros, isn't there? That is for sure. Let's preview that game, then, in a bit more detail, because what we've seen from Luke so far today is a bit of a charge. I sort of said that at the start of the show. Uh, last night, that last game, it was a bit of a statement, wasn't it? 107 to leave the arena here and then come into today. This game, which we're about to see, was important at the very start, provided the players won their games at the start of the day. But now Alex Spellman lost that one in game number two. It just makes it even more important now because one of the things we've got is with these head-to-head -head clashes, one will be gaining legs, one will be losing legs. So it kind of makes it a double whammy on the legs. So... Both players will be needing to get this as tight as possible, even if they are to lose. What's been your synopsis of Spellman today? He played really well in the opening game. Really well. 105 average, and it looks so good. And sometimes when you come back up and you've got to try and play that second game, everything you do just feels like you're not playing as well when you put in something so big. And he didn't hit the ground running in game two. Looked a bit animated, sort of got drawn into the game a little bit too much. And I think he's going to put that right. He's going to be really focused for this. He mentioned to you up here on Monday about his mentality and how he approaches games. He knows, first of all, what this game means. And second of all, the quality of player that he's up against. And just quickly away from this game, your thoughts on Nathan Gervin so far? 
impressed. After day one, it had been so easy just to sort of roll over and have his tummy tickle throughout this group. It's not really worked for him on day one. He lost all five matches, never really looked competitive. Good yesterday, better today. Going to really be interested to see how he gets on on Thursday and Friday because I think he could win one of those groups. Looking forward to this one, aren't we? It's going to decide a lot, that's for sure. It's a game that could have huge consequences here in this Group A on Wednesday at the Super Series. It's Alex Spellman against Luke Littler. This man's going to make his way to the, down to the commentary box to join Chris Mason. Thank you, chaps. Yeah, huge match. And a huge match in terms of, obviously, table position. But also for Luke Littler, as he's not got a win over Spellman. He got thumped by him Monday 4-0. 4-3 yesterday, and I'm sure in the back of Luke's mind, he will want to right the wrongs. 16 from Warrington, uses a 23-gram Luke Littler target dart. You can see there straight on. Lovely action. Lovely first leg is Alex it. to throw first. Our referee, the governor. Paul Hinks. Spellman, much more of a an aimer than Littler. 85. Look very much a, a field player. The dart underneath the the eye 100. line, so it doesn't sight the dart. Where if you watch Spellman, he actually you can see him sight the dart. Under, can talk about eye dominance. One hundred. Slight move of the head could well be left eye dominant. You watching at home, you novice players do not worry about that. It's not really important. I've actually done quite a lot of study on that. And with my previous 100. role as a professional sports coach, I worked with a lot of other coaches and I asked them about what they feel with 92. That. And they said to me that if you played with it originally and then now you're trying to change it, you've already compensated with your hand-eye coordination that you're actually trying to relearn. So 100. I thought, I'm going to ask an optician because I have to go to opticians regularly because I've got a lazy eye. And they said, oh, no, you can't work to something. You've already compensated. 100. So Alex, if you work to it, you're actually going to sort of relearn to throw. So it's something that if you are originally picking it up or your eyesight changes over time, it's something to be aware of, but not something to try and force the issue of as such. No. If you're looking for a, a, an improvement or a percentage on your 92. game. 92. The Through best the thing to do is practices, check. routines, get the technical, um, or sports psychology. Which is... 95. Which is... 24. underrated in our sport. But that is changing. As is the habits of players. Slow progress in our sport, sadly. But you shot well, on the first well, leg, Alex Spellman. Yeah, that was going absolutely nowhere near the double. I can assure you. And as <laughs> unlike the top seed, like which Luke was the first game, a off. wonderful dart. That one. Well, maybe we'll get another look at that at some point. I'd like to see the. I'd like to see that slowed down to see where it was actually going. Uh, that was very much a knit one, pearl one, off the lampshade into the double 12. 100. Now, gamers have these different expressions, don't they? And as a game designer, I'm guessing he's used to it. I'd love to know which one you had to come out with there, because they do things like they say, that's disgusting. Or I remember uh, Ryan Searle did one very similar, and we've already mentioned he's a very big gamer. He did one at the World Championship, and in the interview says, I threw up a little bit in my mouth. You know, these are all sort of... Expressions and things that you get a lot from the gaming community. My son comes out with some absolute pearlers, and I'm like, what are you on about? You know, 97. He his computer games. I'd love to know his analysis of that situation. Well, if 
I'd have been Luke Littler watching that, a little bit of sick would have come up in my mouth. 85, <laughs> Louis your car well, Henry likes to put words together. Shall we call that dirty darting? I think it was dirty darting. 104. That was very nearly dirty. Had a bit of darts housery from time to time. I, uh... Was part of that, of course. 85, Louis Car 20. Did a bit of darts housery against me. Green shot 54, on the second double line. nine, double Louis three. Car. I thought it was only right to repay. That is a 13 dart response. Third leg, Alex, to two first. Game on. Say at the moment, Luke handling the situation the better of the two. It's a level game, and Spellman does have the advantage of throw, which could be a crucial key point in this clash. And as of the advantage, of course, of knowing that they've played twice, and he's won both. 96. Much of that, do you think, will be playing on the mind of Luke Littler? Me sat here in this chair will say, it shouldn't matter, it's 16. a different game, but if I was in the room with my darts out, my shirt on, it'd matter. You're aware of your head-to-head -head records. We'll, we'll all say we don't, but you're you're aware if you haven't beaten someone before. Yeah, when you've played multiple times, and you know it could be say say you've played nine times, and it's five four, even maybe six three. Ninety eight. You're not really that aware of your record, but when you when you know you've never beaten a player then ninety one. Yeah, it's definitely plays uh it definitely has a role. But of course Gervin was in a similar situation. He put that fifty nine. One hundred and thirty four. Alice Hakar one hundred and forty nine. Gave him a different look at this 149. 57 for 32. Wow. What a finish this will be. Game and shot is, on the third leg. Alex that Spellman. That is stunning. What were you saying about ton plus finishes? Benjamin now Alex Spellman's last game. He has not taken out a ton plus finish yet this week. He has saved Both it for like the Luke most important game match. On. Most important game of his week and then probably the most important moment of the week. Because Luke Littler was pounding him there. He was tapping him on the shoulder, teeing up the break of throw. And then Spellman, a 1-4-9 finish. He probably, when he hit that 59, might have even felt that the opportunity had passed, especially when Littler hit that 1-3-4. Yeah. I suppose we're deep enough into the match to have a look at the averages. Well, 60. Well, you can see that Luke Little up. And it's just come down, hasn't it, from 107? It has, that last shot, but it's well over 100 mark. And Alex Spellman is climbing towards that. I wouldn't be surprised to see this level off with both players ending this around the 98-99 mark. 82. Agreed. Sixty. Spellman there was threatening a break of throw, which would be a disaster at this stage for Littler. Ninety-six. Alex Akar one hundred and sixty-seven. Would have the throw to win it four-one. We've waited a while on the ton plus out. Thought we we're going to get them like buses, two at once. Sixty. Look, Akar one hundred and twenty-nine. Ooh. Oh. 93. Oh, myself, Alex Hakar, second look at that. Not just us. Paul Hinks had to get right up to the board. He got his magnifying glass out and everything to double check. Well, he hadn't hit a ton plus finish until the last leg. Oh, it was Luke nearly back to back. But he's telling you where that was. It was low. He'd get up, he says.
Game shot on the four flag. Look at that. There. We're, we're looking at each other in a bit of surprise. He refused the dart at the double 18, choosing to go 16 and 10. Now, yesterday, I said Luke Littler will do Luke anything to, to leave himself on. on tops and tens. I didn't think he'd go that far, though. I am absolutely baffled by that. I don't think I've ever seen that. 96. Just shows how much that statement was it's actually not, bang it's, on. It's not like it's double 19 or double 17 or double 139. nine. I, I get it. it. It's double 18 and he, he just did one and narrowly missed a second. But can't question it. He won the leg. 29. I think we can question it. I think sometimes having the right outcome of winning the leg doesn't override 59. the fact it's the wrong decision. And you make that decision all the time and you're not always going to get that same outcome. You're, you're burning darts. Yeah. And this is why you get people that will change equipment all the time because they'll change it what and they'll the get a little bit of feedback straight away to say it works, but it's not right for them, so they'll change again in two weeks. Yeah. 133. Or two minutes in the case of Peter Wright. Oh, hold on. This might work out quite interesting. Last night, I was live on YouTube and Luke Littler popped in and told me he was going to hit a 170 finish. It's actually broke down that he's left himself the 170 finish. 170. Could this be the best prediction we've ever seen? Fifty-eight. Alex Lukan ninety-six. I think that nod was at you. <laughs> Double eighteen. I don't think he'll go. Sixteen. Double ten. <laughs> Seventy-eight. Won't go double Luka eighteen or double nine either. One hundred and twelve to break the throw and take the lead for the first time in this game. He's not been able to find a big 68. treble with the last four darts. Alex Luka, he checks it himself. You know, well, well thrown darts. And that's where it can get frustrating sometimes when you're just sitting on the wire. No score. Wow. Luka Car fifty-two. Wrong bad. Now, on Monday, those kind of things weren't happening to Spellman. 42. Alex Ucar, 18. I can't believe it. Neither can we. This is the nervy leg. There's always a nervy leg in a big match like this. A, a leg that will sort of be a Being full red 10 leg. moment. And Alex that could Spellman. be it. He had nine darts there from the 170 Luke Littler to break the throw. He wasn't able to convert the opportunity. And... Well, I was going to say you can see Six the disappointment on the first. face of Luke Littler, but it looks like they're both disappointed up there right now. 59. Couple of darts. 136. Broken throw. Should be serving it out here, really. 140. He's got to hold and then break. 95. <laughs> 77. Getting a little bit flustered with the situation. Probably feel like he's had this in his own hands here. He'll be feeling like... 81. Spellman is taking it away from him, but that last start not being straight has moved him to a non-finish. And the likelihood is now we are going to be going to a deciding leg. I did say up on the balcony, if it's going to be a defeat, you want to at least get the three legs on the board so there's not a extension. In the secondary dividing 133. statistic Luka being leg difference. 
It's a dart at the ball. 60. Alex Ubercar, 56. For Spellman to make it three out of three against his younger opponent. And Luke can't quite believe what's been happening here. 36. I like Luke what we're seeing there from Luke. He wasn't watching, thinking, miss, miss, miss. He was just getting his process ready. He's getting himself ready for his shot. Gonna be at double ten. See Spellman in the back shaking his head. Luke was using that time Five. to process. Didn't get Alex the result though. 20. A couple more missed darts for Luke. They might be the last that he throws in this crucial clash to see who's top of the table. The darts are away. Aim shot and the match. And Alex rightly Spellman. so. And Luke Littler desperately disappointed there. That is certainly a bonus for Spellman and one that's got away for Littler. But it is Spellman that goes top of the table there. The average is 88, 83. Spellman 91, 95. For Littler, the only 180 in the match went to Spellman. When we come back, well, it's another biggie as the all Scottish clash of Nathan Gervin and Stephen Johnstone. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where before the break we saw a top of the table clash between Alex Spellman and Luke Littler. I've only got 30 seconds to try and explain this, but there was a lot of incidents crammed into a 4-2 win for Spellman. A 1-4-9 checkout for the American. Littler going for a 36 by splitting it, going 16 for the double 10. It was an incredible game, fitting of the top of the table, but it is Spellman who is the victor, and he puts himself two points clear once again at the top of the Group A table. Next up, it is the meeting between the players in third and fourth place in the table, respectively. It's Nathan Gervin up against Stephen Johnson, and it's being watched by Matt Edgar and Chris Mason. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, it was a, a very interesting match, and one where Hitler will feel that it just got away from him, I think, and 
it's hard to be critical again to take into account the enormity of the situation and that affected his performance someone who's dealt with the enormity of the situation today has been Nathan Gervin and he dealt with this challenge yesterday very well winning Oh, first leg is Nathan to throw first. With a 92 49, and that Game was on, on the back of that disastrous day on Monday where he lost to Stephen Johnston 4 3 in a cracking day. Arguably 81. one of the, the best ties of the day, both players averaging over 92. 100. Makes you wonder if they've crossed paths before, being from the same parts of the world. And mm. sometimes when you get that, you do get a little bit more comfort, a bit more familiarity with that player. Yeah, you're not you're not playing against the the unknown. Fifty five. Like I said he put it right yesterday after the defeat to Stephen on Monday. Eighty five. Well, that was one of Stephen's best performances, wasn't it? 60. wonder if any of these are going to treat us to any of those sort of Damon Hetter moves if they win this one. 126. Yeah, that was a bit different over the weekend. He stole the cruise lollipops 81. and handed this them out. 116. All 200 of them. Then it was signed foam fingers and then it was the... It was the Mad Hatter dance, wasn't it? I don't know what's gone on, but what's in those Easter eggs? We've got the tungsten T Rex and 40. then that Damon Hetter walk on. Game show on the first Easter leg. just Nathan made Gerber. everyone go a bit adventurous, shall we say? Good word. Second leg, Stephen to throw first. Game on. Well, I don't want to call it too early. This one. would be some turnaround. We did suggest towards the back end of day one. It wasn't out the realms of possibility. That Nathan Gervin would bounce back and somehow find a way into group B. Well, right now, he is doing just that. 140. We do have some very interesting players joining us at the back end of this week. We've got Jason 85. Askew joining us, who is the record holder for this tournament in terms of an average. We've got James Richardson, who's been winning some ADC tournaments 84. this past weekend. We've got Richard North, who will tell you all about what he's been doing over and over again. Adam Mould, who's won a week. Mark Graham, one hundred and forty. Well WDF circuit. Gary Blades makes his return back to the Super Series. A former PDC Tour card holder, 16. he did reach a Nathan semi-final last year on the PDC Pro Tour. Yeah, James Richardson has already qualified for Series Four. This 89. is Series Three. Car series One by Conan Whitehead in Champions Week. Series Two, Raymond Smith, and the lineup. This series three so far is hot. Eleven. Nathan Carr fifty two. Staying away from tops now. Game shot on the second leg. Nathan Gerber. It's a conscious decision, and I like that. If you don't feel you're hitting your favourite double, don't keep trying to hit it. Try another. And if that Third works, stick with it first. Game until on. it doesn't work. Don't forget, you can contact us direct into the 134 comms box by Matt's Twitter page at the Edgar 501. You can also 59 use at MSS Darts on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. 57. Eighty-three. 
find me on Twitter or TikTok. 55. I am a, a bit of an Instagrammer, but not really darts related, I'm afraid. 96. Chris180 Mason. 140. Any questions for us? Or any thoughts? Get in touch. We'll read them out if they're any good. 58. Nathan Carr, 115. 115. Well, this is pretty good. 75. This is very good. Average just shy of a ton at the moment for Nathan Gerben. And that's a, an average of consistency. It's not because he's Nathan topped in an 11 data and got it up there. It's a good, fair reflection of his performance. This is what he's very good at, working around darts. Game shot on the third leg. Nathan Another Gerber. example of just that there on the double ten. 16, 14 and 18, the darts used to go 3-0 up. Ball play Stephen to throw first. Game on. A, a, dart, a, a double. And he did that to Stephen yesterday in that 4-0 win. 40. He didn't get a single dart or a double in that match. Eighty. And a few of them. And that will be down to the dart not going through the air cleanly. One hundred. Because the release isn't clean. The dart isn't having enough time to come out of the weep and wibble. Forty one. Straighten up. The aerodynamic properties of the dart is lost on release. 85. We had a side shot of it going through the air when he's overly aggressive. You'd see the dart throw all sorts of shapes in the air. 55. 100. It's been that scoring power that's been the problem for Stephen Johnston. He's only managed four darts on a double so far today in his two matches and a large chunk of this one as well. Yet to have a dart a double in this match. 60. And he's going to need to find a treble. So yeah, a dart a double at the 116 combo or he could go three matches with only four darts at the double. Especially where Nathan Gervin is playing like this. 156. Stephen Carr, 116. Gonna get a dart at a double, and it's gonna be tops. Game and he gets it. Flag, Steven Johnson. Super finish. Acknowledged by Nathan, who himself had a wonderful uh, one-five-six approach play. Fifth leg, Nathan to throw first. Game on. So that moves the darts thrown at a double so far today for Stephen Johnstone as five darts hit at a double, four. Some strike rate. Eighty-one. You just get down there a bit quicker with doubling stats like that, he would be top of the table. 60. Well, if he was having a bit more on the scoring power, we might as well just write his name on the big check and give it him now and save the rest of the week. 45. 140. One hundred. Forty-one. Don't forget, tomorrow is double session day. Action gets underway at 1 p.m. until 6. And then we're back for Group B. At 65. 10. 140. He's taken confidence, hasn't he, from that previous leg? 
why not? Nice big finish, 116. Doubles. When you're checking out the way Stephen Johnson is, it will give you confidence because you know when you get down, it can go. You get the total opposite where some people score heavy and then the when they're missing Stephen their doubles, Johnson. they sort of affect them for the rest of the match in other ways. But this is fantastic from Stephen Johnston on the finish. Not only is he taking them out with one dart in hand, but that's two combination like finishes, a 120 on. and a 116. He's getting back into this game. Six eight. Yeah, from three nil up, Nathan's not had a a dart to win the match. Despite that fantastic one five six setup to leave him on the six, double eight. sixteen, the way it's going, we might stop the game in a minute. Go to Stephen Johnson and say, "Just throw it the doubles. Don't just do it Yorkshire board style." <laughs> one hundred. One twenty a visit. You're not familiar with the Yorkshire board. That is a trebleless dartboard. 57. It's just the doubles and a very, very small bullseye, just where the wires all meet in the middle. 134. Yeah, there's a fascinating 100. array. Have you, have you done a video on dartboards on Edgar TV and showed the different types of games? I've done a few. I've done the snooker. And I've done the 46. golf dartboard. I haven't yet done things like the the Yorkshire board or the fives and things like right. that. Right. Well, we're gonna have to. We'll make a video. We'll go up and see my pal Paul Whitworth up in Manchester, and we'll we'll have a day on the. One hundred and seventy-four. Stephen Carr, one hundred and sixty-one. Make a video about it because the intricacies of slip up, which is the game you play on that board, are fascinating. It's an amazing game. Fifty-four. Nathan the car, 110. 70. Cannot convert the approach play this time. 70. Stephen Ocar, the tops, but is it going to be three ton pluses on the spin? Still go. Did the 54 for ball. 41. Nathan Ocar, 40. We mentioned until now he's not managed to have a match dart. He's now going to get three. Out tops. Target that earlier on in the week he was leaving more than any other. But he has avoided a bit recently due to those low match. darts. Nathan and he'll be happy enough with the switch to the double ten as Nathan Gervin gets over the line. You can see what that means to him. Group B qualification is on the cards. And that will be important to his chance of getting through to Saturday night. Coming up next, Alexander Merckx against Kenny Nails.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where despite two ton plus checkouts from Stephen Johnston, it was Nathan Gervin who sealed victory in our middle match of the day here at the Live Lounge. And so, match number nine, the final match of the third round of fixtures, pits an all Lowland battle as Alexander Merckx of the Netherlands takes on Kenny Nayans of Belgium. Watching this one in the commentary box, Matthew Edgar and Chris Mason. Thanks, Henry. Well, a mixed bag between these two on. Monday they met, and it was a 4-2 win for this man. Revenge yesterday, Alexander Merckx, as he won the tie for one. Can't really take too much out of their performances today so far. Merckx losing his opening game 4-1 to Spellman with a 76. Kenny losing 4-1 himself with a 72. And then Kenny bouncing back with a great performance against Johnstone, winning 4-1 with a 94 average. Merck's going down. First leg, Alexander did through four, first. 4-1 to Littler with an 82.35. As I was coming back from chatting with Henry on the balcony, 97. I had a quick hello with the guys on my way past. And Kenny... Said he's feeling a lot more positive after that 16. last game. And I'm not surprised really because the last five matches before that, it was in the sort of mid 70s and then 83. it dropped down to the low 70s. It was really looking like it was going all wrong for him. And he put it right in that last one and he's 16. certainly feeling those positive vibes once again. Well, some switch this in the pricing. Merckx was 8 to 13 favourite at 9 o'clock this morning. Kenny was 6 to 5. And it pretty much was rolls reversed before the off. Probably down to the start to the day. Oh, man, 57. Merckx. I think it's more the direction he's going as well. Yeah. Because it's been on the slide. 57. The average 88 on day one dropped down to 83 per, um, average yesterday. 140. Today, Low 70s, isn't it? It's a 79 at the moment. Oh, it's high 70s. For the, for the day. So, uh, a five-point drop and a four-point drop. He's only had four darts at a double today. Forty-eight. Make that six. <laughs> and he will be getting more. He'll hope it's only one more, because that'll mean he'd have hit the double with the first dart. Fifty-eight. Alexander Lukar, 16. All the players after this one. We have two first leg. to play. Alexander Merckx. It's a 19 dart hold in leg one for Merckx. Yeah, the matches up next. Big, big game for both. Second leg, Kenny, the third first. Is game on. Gervin. Certainly Nathan will be looking to just put one over Littler because they potentially okay. could end up in group B together. I think it's important to just put down a, a bit of a marker. Then it'll be Nayans against Spellman. At the moment, it's hard to see Nayans getting too much out of that one. Then it's Johnstone against Merckx. Nayans 100. against Littler. And Merckx against Gervin. And then Spellman against Johnston. I think the table's going to stay 100. pretty much as is, looking at those running of matches. Just watching Kenny Nayams there when you missed those darts. He was angry. 97. He was staring at the board. He was piercing it through. I thought we might have had a touch of the old Colin Lloyds coming in then for a moment. 60. Watch out, dartboard. They're built slightly different, aren't they? Back then, Lloyd, he was built like a tank. This boy's built like a racing 94. snake. He moves as quick. The best one I heard was built like a drinking straw. 87. Kenny McCarr, 170. 98. I, don't, I think actually Dumbbell Kenny press Lukar, pretty much 72. a hand what he weighs each side. 52. Alexander Rukar, 98. 
incredible really to think how close the the two countries are in Belgium and the Netherlands. Yes, the Netherlands is the car twenty tallest nation in, in the world. Game shot on the second leg. Kenny Nains. Third leg, Alexander to throw first. Game on. 94. The players have got couple of laps of fixtures left. These are two players we will be seeing for the rest of the week because they can't win this group. So you'll be seeing these on Thursday and Friday. And in all likelihood, we're probably going to be seeing them in Group C. What group the C day? will be coming to you Thursday and Friday afternoon now at the new start time. It's no longer 9.30 like you're seeing at the moment. It'll be starting at 1 p.m. So... That will be coming on your Modus Super Series 16. YouTube channel. Nice for us on the Friday morning, coming off air at 1.30 and actually being able to get some sleep. 58. Alexander Carr, 167. Forgot what sleep was. 40. Group B. 100. Off in the evening from 95. Didn't want to give us the 127 and game there from Paul Hinks. Which. Oh, I'd love to see that again. 58. He did something very similar Alexander with Andy Carr, Jenkins, 52. didn't he? Was it like 124 and game, game in the, the old leg. Alexander venue in Southampton? Everything going with the darts. So far. Fourth leg, Kenny to throw first. Game on. 57. It tends to be that way, doesn't it, as well? You can do all these amazing things in your career. Paul Hinks has had a Six fantastic eight. career at the very top of the game, refereeing all the biggest matches on all the biggest stages, including world finals. And the one thing we talk about is the 127 in game. We know it class between Michael Van Gerwen and Bill Taylor. Yep. 40. And it's the same, look, look at Colin Lloyd, former match play champion world number one, and we're talking about him punching one the dartboard. Certainly made some... Some noise as well. The, she, the, the stage shook. It was Bruce Spenley refereeing, wasn't it? it was and he, he didn't know what. He'd probably never five. seen it before and didn't know what to do. The actual the board buckled into the stage setting. <laughs> Ninety-one. Can you recall one hundred and thirty? I'd love to have been backstage that day because you know what a backstage is like on the show. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what goes on behind the scenes. 50 cameraman spun backstage. I bet he had a fright. No Oops. score. Went for the early split with Merck's back on 193. 53. Can you recall 20? What are you doing again? No, he's going straight for double five this time. Game shot on the fourth See, what's the problem with double five, can he? No problem. Polish it up. Although I get the split. You don't want to start getting onto five in bits. And Lloyd is still very much involved it's in like the game. Alexander with his through first. Game on. Roll with Sky as part of their production team and also part One of their forty. Punditry and commentary team. Looks very well these days. Yeah, he's fifty seven. Health and fitness kick looks really well. Still does the odd exhibition here and there. 97. Still very, very popular. Real. One of the game's real good guys, Lloydy. Great player as well. Underrated, I think. 57. 60. 
some great battles with Lloydy over the years. 85. Knocked horns many times. 44. 44. He is someone that comes up when we mention... Who would you like to see at the Super Series? A lot of people say they'd 44. like to see yeah. Colin Hoyt. I'd like to see it as well, but I think it's probably very unlikely. He doesn't, 60. He doesn't quite have the, the passion for it, but that's now. That can change, of course. 140. Alexander Carr, 100. This trend of... Game show through, the fifth leg. Continue. Well, there's your answer. That's a fifth. That beautiful ton plus out. Six leg. Can he do two first? Game on. Those people that I'd like to see here at the Super Series, or well, top of the list, Bill Taylor. Love to see it. Who would you Thank like you to are. see here at the Moda Super Series? Do tweet us in. At MSS Starts, Facebook, Instagram, and 97. Twitter. And also chuck in the tag at the Edgar 501. Let me know what you would like to see here at the Super Series, and we'll give it a 16. mention. It could be someone from the past, someone from the present breaking through, or is there a bit of a local legend in your area that's not quite been unhurt? Let us know. Who is it? Tweet us in. Yeah, and I think once Phil's 45. had his new hip. He's, I think he would really benefit from a even a, a Thursday and Friday afternoon maybe. I think he would I think he would get so much out of it getting those guaranteed 10 matches. 126. 85. I think it would also give him, give him an opportunity to experiment and Ninety-nine, Alexander Carr, one hundred and four. Try a few things out, but this is for the match. Nope, can't find. Forty. Can you recall sure. eighty? Everyone on that seniors darts tour right now is probably thinking, "Shut up, Edgar. We don't want Taylor there because he'll get match ready." Sixty, Alexander Carr, sixty-four. Could be match over. In this one, Alexander Merckx, been good on the doubles. Problem's been getting 32. there. 32. Can you car 20? This is another one that could go all the way. Two tens. Game show on the sixth leg. Can the he bottom of the table clash. I mean, fifth and sixth position, both on eight. One of them will go to ten, and that's the winner of this next leg. Well, during the short interval, we both said this Seven and final leg, Alexander, just real first. Game all one. the way. 140. 140. This is where finding the best. And the chips are down. Good signs. 44. 140. Back to back on 40s for Nayans. 140. Be a really good time to remind you that Kenny Nahum does have four titles to his name. 60. Development tours and challenge tours. When you look at the 60. standard Kenny of play Carr, 161. Those, they, they take some women winning, never mind the pro tours. 65. Alexander Carr, 117. Trouble 19. Would have left tops. 53. Can you recall 96? 212s. Game show. 212s he Kenny gets. Nayans. Celebrates with a 15 darter taking out the 96 after each hit in trouble five. Picked off the 57. Got the double 12 and it's Nayans. It does move on. The 10 points alongside Stephen Johnston. Here are the numbers 79.06 and 77.13. When we come back, Luke Littler back in action.
against Nathan Gervin. This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. You can be a part of it every single Saturday night here at the Modus Super Series. Head over to dartshot.tv or you can scan the QR code which will be on screen during our matches this afternoon to get your tickets to every single Saturday night final here at the Modus Super Series. Well, before the break, we saw Kenny Nayans get the better of Alexander Merckx by four legs of three. The first match of the day, they went all the way to a decider. So let's have a look at the table now of every player playing first. 13 games in the group and as you can see it's Alex Spellman who has a two-point cushion at the top of the table from Luke Littler in second. He takes on the player who's now third in the group in Nathan Gervin. A crucial game for him in the battle for Group B darts which is very hotly contested indeed. So all to play for down at both ends of the table. Next up Littler v Gervin and this is being watched by Chris and Matt. We've got all our eyes and attention on Luke Littler and Alex Spellman because they are the two players top of the table battling it out for this group winner's prize to book their place in Saturday night's final. But we're going to have to keep our eye here on the potential dangers that face the 16-year-old from Warrington that Nathan Gervin possesses. We look at his position in the table and we say third and 12 points however he did lose all his games on the opening day which means for his last eight matches he's actually won six of those which make him 
in the same vein as form as the two players at the top of the table over the last first couple of days. Luke, first. Yeah, it's been Game some on. turnaround for him. This is match number 14 on debut for Luke Littler. Littler. And he's won nine of his previous 13. Two of them against this man. 97. I do feel if he loses this match, the chance of him getting through to Saturday night at this juncture 56. will probably be over, and then he'll look for a Group B campaign where he will be hoping to be in Saturday night, just like all of you can on those tables you'll see behind them right there. If you want to come and sit at one of those and watch the finals this Saturday, all you've got to do is scan your QR code, 58. which is on your screen right now, or head over to dartshop.tv, book your... Tickets, I believe it's a one pound booking fee. One hundred and forty. It's a very affordable night here. It's fifty five. Nathan the car one hundred and thirty two. Ten pound gets you three tokens and three drinks of your choice. It's actually 16. cheaper than spoons. Twenty-five. Nathan Carr, seventy-two. Green shot on the first leg. Nathan Gerber. This could be a danger. He's already broken the throw of Luke Littler. A defeat here, I think, ends his hopes of getting through in the first group. That being Group 8. The one that will like conclude Nathan at the first. end of Game today's on. action. We did ask earlier on who you'd like to see here at the Moda Super Series. Lee 120. Rayford has brought a name up here that I'm quite familiar with. Someone who I think we probably expected to see a little bit more of, actually. He's mentioned one, a local 45. lad to him, Connor Hopkins. But he's also mentioned Nico Springer, the young mm. German. Yeah, good show. There's him and Nico Kurz as well, wasn't they? Two sort of young Germans. Nico Kurz had a couple of good runs at the World Championships in the Alexandra Palace. 59. What are the some fascinating names? <clears throat> Not only in the remainder of this series three, but ninety-seven. Nathan Carr, one hundred and sixteen. Series four, and we have our very own Matt Eker ninety-six playing in a few weeks' time. Luckily enough for you, it's my week off. <laughs> Fifty-nine. Nathan Carr, twenty. What's one of them? What's what's a what's a week <laughs> yeah, off? I know. Well, I say a week off. I'm. Game shot on the second leg. Nathan to do The Euro Tour. But let, let's call it a couple of days at home. I don't even know where home is at the minute. Third leg, Luke, to throw first. Game on. I'm not sure if it's the Travel Lodge or the Premier Inn, where I live. <laughs> 97. Of course, after that, you're off to Iceland, aren't you? I'm off there after this week to Iceland. 140. They'll be back in Belgium again. Yeah, I fly back from the Netherlands on the Monday with another 134. bag in the car, which will be at Bristol Airport, and I drive straight here to do Champions Week. 180. Forty-nine. Look at your car. One hundred and seventy. Well. <laughs> one hundred. Let your car. One hundred and thirty-two. Twenty-five leaves one hundred and seven. That leaves the ball, and it's one of those darts where he's got to move again. Game and one of, of those light. darts, Nathan he's Nathan found Nathan. the target. This is very, very special indeed, from Nathan Gervin. 
Yeah, Both like Nathan to throw first. Game on. 109.98 after three legs. He's doing to Luke what Luke did to him yesterday. Yeah. The very last game of yesterday, Luke Littler averaged 107.36 and dished out a bit of a toweling to Nathan Gervin, who only managed to have one dart at the double. He's 16. took the towel off him, dipped it in water, rung it up, and he's giving it him back. One hundred and thirty one. <clears throat> one hundred and forty. One hundred and thirteen, and it just continues to climb. One hundred and forty. One hundred and fourteen. This is performance of the week, and I did warn you at the start that he is a guy in form in six 90. of his last eight matches. May stay there. 47. He's wasted a dart. <clears throat> 140. Need to call 43. To just make sure. Back to the 32. Oh, move the wire. 11. Loot your car 66. To get his first dart at a double in this game. Gonna get two. Good guide. Not used. Can be game car, over. And a very big defeat in terms of the legs. Game shot on the match. Nathan Gervin with a fabulous performance and a, a nod of acknowledgement. Winning legs of 15, 14, 12, and 17. An end average 103. 0.66 and included in there that beautiful showbiz shot, the 132 on the ball. Nathan Gervin almost, almost guaranteeing his place in Group B. When we come back, it will be Kenny Nayans back in action against Alex Spellman.
Welcome back to the Mojo Super Series where Nathan Gervin has put in one heck of a performance to get the better of Luke Littler by four legs to nil. 103.66 the average, including that magnificent 1-3-2 checkout en route to success against Littler. What that means now is Alex Spellman can win the group if he can get victory over Kenny Nains in this one here at the Live Lounge and watching this one in the commentary box. Here's Chris Mason and Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, after that defeat to Nathan Gervin, a win here, and it is done and dusted. Spellman wins Group A. Do you have a Do you have any recollection of what odds Spellman was with to win Group A? I don't. I know that Luke Littler was like seven to ten. Yeah, I I, I seem to think it was nine to two. Yeah, I think it was big. Those of you in the know, those of you who have been supporting Alex Spellman on the other side of the world, will know. First leg is Kenny to third first. I'm surprised that Game on. we've not seen Stuart Kellett. Hmm. Yeah, good shout. I wonder if Stuart Kellett's still playing. I believe he is. I believe he's playing county at darts at the moment. Is right. it Cheshire? I think he plays. Ninety-one. Well? Hmm. One hundred. Sixty. Cheshire. He's playing in the Cheshire Super League as well. Currently second in the rankings. Three dart average of an 83.25, which yeah, still quite tasty over 89. that sample of fixtures anyway. And you think the some of the players that play in that Super League, such as Bradley Brooks, Sean Wilkinson, both with tour cards. 60. How about Wesley Harms. Good point. Hmm. 98. Very good point. Player that got his tour card and then didn't travel during COVID. We've just not seen anything of him. 100. Oh, Sparky. Very interesting character. Twenty-eight. Sure, there's a few pearlers we're forgetting about out there. Yep. You mentioned Darren Young, maybe one hundred. Young here. Well, I hear that Marshall James is playing some decent darts. Former runner-up at the Lakeside in the MBC. Kenny O'Connor, 90. Maybe a, a week of Welsh legends. Lockie, Chrissy Johns. He's on the first leg. Kenny Nayans. Nayans. Run continues. Second leg, Alex to two first. Game on. And a defeat here for Spellman will keep things interesting and active. He's got a chance here to get it wrapped up. 60. Is he aware of that situation? Sure he is. This is a situation we've not seen yet from him either. How he deals with that. 140. How about another name then for potential super serious call-up? How about Mr. Coat? Yeah. One hundred and forty. As long as he doesn't bring the said coat. <laughs> One hundred. Coat is banned, but he can come. Jamie Lewis doing some good things on the WF tour recently, getting his form back. Maybe we could see you mentioned Welsh players. Jamie Lewis, a player who reached the semi-final of the PDC World Championship in 2018. Be a good addition. 55. Alex Hill Carr, 161. Have we seen Kevin Munch before? 
Not that I can recall. Eighty-nine. Oh, I know what I'd like to see. Dmitry Gorbanov. One hundred and seventy-four. I think we've seventy-two. There, Never heard of him. One of the happiest people I've ever seen take to a world championship stage. Ball for spell level us up, but can you do it? Found something here in this game. And he might be doing a bit of a favour here for Luke Littler at the Each same time. The second leg, Kenny Nairns. In a game, or well, the last couple of games, where the players at the top of the table have had opportunities to have it wrapped up, they just can't finish the job. No. This is good stuff again. For Luke Kenny to do first. That, game on. In the early stages of his match against Merckx, he fired out of the blocks. 57. In a, in a match that was just trading holds of throws and then produced a a fifteen darter to get it done. One out of forty. I've got possibly one of the names that I would really like to see. One hundred. Go on. Royden Lamb. Yeah. About Elagan. That's he doesn't have a tour card, does he? I don't think so, no. One hundred and eighty! One hundred and forty! Spellman's starting to raise his game now. One forty, one eighty. Needs to. Doesn't want to re-invite Luke Littler back into this. Could have a real international week, couldn't we? Fifty-eight. No Brits. Test our powers of research. One out of them, forty. This is beautiful stuff. One hundred and twenty-three. Averaging now over a ton. We get to the end of leg three. Forty-seven. Kenny Ricard, sixty-four. Game back show on back. the third leg. Kenny Fourteen Nance. daughters. Wowzers. Fourth leg, Alex to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Just like Luke Littler, who's top of the table, ran into one with Nathan Gervan. Alex Spellman. 91. Having a taste of the same medicine. Yeah, Nayans. 99 62 the average. Three out of four on the doubles. 97. But like I earlier on, I feel like they're playing the situation, not the match. 85. The desperation in just trying to get the job done. It's creating additional pressure. 58. Eighty five. There is one consolation for Spellman. Even if he is to lose 4-0, Luke Littler lost 4-0 in the last game. So it does just keep it open for Spellman and keep it in his own hands. All he's got to do, even if he loses this, is beat Stephen Johnstone 50. in the last match and he will have the throw. And that's provided Luke Littler wins his game because he'll be playing Kenny Nahums, who's averaging 95.47 in this one, which you wouldn't say that's a gimme. No. Well, when you look at the numbers last time out, Little at 79.33, and prior to that, 91.95. Well, Nahans' mid-90s average here will make him 
more than competitive. 100. Alex Yukar, 117. He's been finishing. He's already had a 90 checkout. Nayans. 54 and double 18. He won't be going that way if he gets a go. May not get a go. Tops. 97. Can you look on 90? He has only took out the one tumblers finish, Alex Spellman, despite being the top of the table player throughout. But it's bullseye for a 4 0 success. And Green what a performance from Kenny Nyams. He hasn't had much go his own way. Up against the goes, had everything go his own way. But on the dartboard, that is where it matters. Four legs played all to Kenny Nyams at 95.43. And you can see what it meant to him at the end of that one as we enter our final round of matches. Coming up, we'll have Stephen Johnson and Alexander Merckx. Wowzers, who would have had the top two players in the group both losing in back-to-back -back games by four legs to nil? Well, that is exactly what we've seen here at the Super Series. As Kenny Nayans sealed a bagel upon Alex Spellman in our previous match. Doing so for much improved 95 and a half average on route to that success. So the final game of round 14 sees Stephen Johnson in action. He takes on Alexander Merckx and this is being watched by Matt and Chris. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, I was just saying to Matt there while we were off air, I wonder what the odds would have been for back-to-back -back bagels for Luke and Alex Bellman. Top two in the table, both beaten 4-0 last time out. Well, if you back those, good luck to you. But take up another hobby. <laughs> yeah, maybe stop first while you're ahead Steven because first. Not the sort of things that will keep landing. This one. And there's Santa Merckx and Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson technically can... 85. 
move up a couple of positions in the table. Well, as far as their 16. ambitions are, they are sealed and done. They will be playing in Group C. So both players will be back tomorrow and Friday from 1pm. See how their Group C campaign goes. We've had a few more suggestions for players that people would like to see. 82. James Kent has come forward and said there is a local player to him, Nick Ellis, who's just 16. won the Surrey Super League single. So well done to Nick Ellis. Beating Daryl Pilgrim in the final, who is a sizable scout, someone who's a bit of a Super Series legend. 59. He's also mentioned that he would like to see Max Hop and Wesley Plazier. Good shouts. 100. Yeah, that's two that 140. Previously mentioned we'd like to see have an opportunity here at the Super Series. Here's some player that Wesley plays here. 45. Alexander Carr, 141. World Masters on the WF side. We've also had another one from Lee. Thanks for your suggestion. 95. Keep them coming. Studio he has Carr, suggested 95. Danny Baggish. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why Danny hasn't been over yet. He's moved back to America, so it's probably yeah. a bit logistic. But I'm sure, 43. especially if he does make the World Championship from the CDC, that it'd probably tie in and come maybe a week early to have him here like Raymond leg. Smith did. Yeah. yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? That's great. I mean, we are, we are moving towards a situation, of course, where we could have 12 players from like Alexander did through first. America and Canada. It's certainly hitting the requirement now in terms of standard. That CDC tour is looking very tasty. 96. And certainly when they're coming over, they're all doing their country proud, as Alex Spellman is here, top of the table. And it gates. Well, our, our times in the afternoons and evenings on Thursday, Friday and Saturday would, would work for... One of the American time with it and Canadian time. Stephen Johnson gets his third 180. He treats us to an Alan Shearer. It's someone we don't expect to see a lot of 180s from. 100. Because of the shape of the dart, but he certainly can find a few. 44. Stephen Carr, 125. I like that bullseye route on the 150 earlier on in the week. He got the ball there. It'd been 25 and ball again. 73. Obviously has a face in the route. He's got three tumblers checkouts as well so Super far this 52. week. Two of them. Came in the game earlier on today. Back to back the 116 and the 120. Monday. It was a win for Merck, Alexander Carr, 4 128. with an 85 average and a couple of... 56, Stephen Carr, 32. 180s. Getting shot on the second leg, Stephen Yesterday, Johnston. It was a win for that man there, Stephen Johnston. 4-1 with a 180 and a, an average of 88.52. So like Stephen to throw first, impressive. game on. Was the finishing 80% four from five? 78. 47. So the vast majority of his 180s in the Super Series have come against Merrick. 85. <laughs> 91. I think that is one of the good things about the Super Series. I coined the phrase Worlds 100. Collide, where we take the best of Challenge Tour, Development Tour, players just coming off the Pro Tour, the ADC, the Seniors Tour, the Ladies Tour. All those best of those worlds come and collide here at the Super Series. And 100. 
names of the past or names that aren't travelling as much, like we've mentioned, such as Wesley Harms, that we'd like to see. Sixty. Got a few more Sibirikar suggestions coming through. Benito van der Pass. Good show. I like it. Dragutin Horvat. Sixty. The German. Ninety-four. Stephen Carr, seventy-eight. And even more support for big Wesley plays here. Fifty-eight. Alexander Carr, one hundred and fifty-one. Game shot on the third leg. Alexander Merckx. Well, that's a third consecutive break of throw. That was a beautiful finish. 4 flag Alexander to throw first. Game on. Seeing it all here. 180s. Big finishes. Bull attempts. 100. It wasn't his biggest finish of the week, though. That came earlier on, a 152. So... Not much difference, two trebles to the double, but in terms 60. of numbers, not the best one, despite the fact it's probably harder to do than the 152. Yeah. Yeah, because of the 100. moving around the board. Well, you're high, low, and then back to the very, very top. Rather than the two darts and the treble 20 for the double 16. 60. Well, we do this on numbers, unfortunately, Alexander, so it's not your best finish of the week. 81. You have to go a little bit better to the one five three or the one five four. Fifty eight. Just do the one five seven. And then the one sixty and then the one seventy. Well Luke Littler's told us he's going to one seventy for us today, didn't he? Yeah. Still time. He will play his last game of Group A in our very next match when he takes on Alexander Kenny Nyams. Alexander Carr, 115. 79. How do you assess Stephen Johnson over the Alexander last Carr, 36. couple of days? Obviously, he's on debut here, representing the ADC on TV debut as well. Twenty. Well, I think it's, I think it's a tough one for him. A famous father in the world of darts, as of, of course, in Peter Johnston, who gave 59. me a good shot at the embassy 16. in 1998. Game shot on the fourth leg. And Alexander Merckx. At, at this level, he is is seriously inexperienced. So this for him is a, is is a massive learning curve, and it will. Well, when this week is over, first, game on. whenever it is over for him, it will give him a good insight into whether or not he fancies this as a, as a career. Because you you quickly deal with the the ups and downs of... 100. Well, like I say, it's not knockout darts, but still tournament darts and the emotion that comes with it. And... Listen, there's obvious 45. talent there, isn't there? We've we've seen plenty of that from him. There's plenty of emotion. Forty-six. And it's going to be interesting to to follow. I think he's, as we've seen before with some of the ADC players that they qualified, came and played so well. They've got him invited back, and I can certainly see Stephen getting the nod to return at some stage. Maybe returning for Champions Week. Who knows? They certainly 16. developed as the week's gone on, and we've seen a lot more of his qualities and characteristics, which is that he's very good on the doubles and getting out of legs. 51. Yeah, I think, and and under pressure as well, and those, those clutch finish situations. And I think if he adds a improved no, element I'm to his scoring phase of matches, he'd be a, he'd be a, he'd be a dangerous player. That's definitely something we can say about Stephen Johnson, that his performance doesn't waver depending on the situation. He's not one that sort of overreads and tries to boss the game. 99. Alexander Lucas, 74. Oh, a very good line of consistency. And before people say about his, what, 
the poor performance 54. of levels in games that Steven Newcastle, sometimes 60. that could just be down to having a bad game, and that happens. Getting shot on the fifth leg, Stephen Johnson. More evidence of those good doubles there from Stephen Johnson. 50% in this one, two from four. He just continues to be impressive on the outer ring. He was two from Six three, one from from one, two first. from Game two. On. So he has hit seven 81. darts at the double today. Out of the ten, he's been offered 70%. 99. <laughs> He was nearly 50% yesterday. Yeah. 14 from 29. 47. Going back to our topic of players that people would like to see here at the Super Series, we've had a couple more suggestions, and I like a couple of these. 122. Paul Lim. Yeah. Well, that could be part of the... 60. North American contingent as well, couldn't it? How about this one? Sago Asada. Yeah. 60. 140. 140. Makura Suzuki's been here already, hasn't she? Yes. 95. Yeah, a couple of times. 133, Simicar 125. We're just waiting on 105, Alexander Murks. We found the ladies' game. Game yeah. shot in the match, Alexander Merckx. Alexander Merckx finds tops. And gets it done. All two. A much needed win for him, and that puts. Johnston at the foot of the table there. The number is 7817 for the winner. Merckx, just the 1180 in the match going to Johnston. Well, when we come back, it's the final cycle of games and it's Kenny Nayans against Luke Littler.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Alexander Merck's got the better of Stephen Johnston by four legs to two in the final game of our fourth round of fixtures for the day. The highlight there being a 1-5-1 checkout for the Dutchman. Well, let's have a look then at the table as we approach the final round of fixtures for the day. As far as Nathan Gerben is concerned, his place in Group B is now secure. What we're looking at now is who's going to go on and win the group. And that ultimately could be decided in this game because a win for Kenny Nayans. And we will know that Alex Spellman will be in Saturday night's final. Watching this one in the commentary box is Chris Mason and Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, Kenny Nayans has been on a, a little bit of a, a bit of a run. Last time out. Beat table topping Alex Spellman 4 0 with a 95 43, 80 percent on the doubles and two finishes of 90, one of them on the ball to win the match. Prior to that, he had a 4 3 win over the winner of our last match, Alexander Merckx. Prior to that, he beat Stephen Johnston 4 1. So he should be the player with confidence. First leg is Kenny to throw first. Again. <laughs> What's going, yeah. on? What's yes. going on with him? <laughs> He's lovely and constantly being attacked this week. <laughs> One out of them, four. Well, it's... <laughs> His reflexes are certainly good. 140. Maybe the way, the way he moves those feet will get him on Dancing with the Stars or something. It looked like you're on Dancing on Ice at that point. 140. Would have been the most viral darting clip ever. 95. It bounced out with that much force. I think it nearly got him in the head. Been like the guy with his hand Kenny over the board all over 70. again. <laughs> the way he looks at the board, waiting for the dart to land in the board, and it's in his head. 118. <laughs> Look at the car, 121. 11 and bought. Ooh, wow. 53. Three remaining. 81. Can you recall 52? Double eight. That works. In fact, it's... 44. Balan aims for the 40. trouble 12 on that shot, doesn't she? Yeah, I was just seeing that there, and I thought, actually, it breaks down quite well. I do like that shot. I like things where you've got a smaller target to aim at that really focus you as you're into it. Because if you miss the first leg, 12, you still get the shot of the tops anyway. Exactly. Well, two missed darts for a break of throw. Second leg, Luke to throw first. Game on. Costly for Kenny. 100. Big win here, and then the pressure is on. An experiment who will play 100. Our final match of this Group A against Stephen Johnston. Following this one, 57. It's Merckx versus Gervin. Nathan's place in 96. B secured, as mentioned by Henry. One of the eighty. One hundred and twenty. Oh, Ooh, you can't like one hundred and sixty-four. Sixty. All Luke Littler can do here is win and then hope. Eighty-five. Look, your car one hundred and four. Out of his hands in terms of being able to do it all within this match. We could be in a situation, of course, depending on Can the scoreline. It's a case that Spellman doesn't even need to win, does he? It would just a, needing a, a certain amount of legs. 45. So Luke can do 56. part of his job in 
Sense of winning as big as he can here. A 4 0, 4 1 would certainly help. 46. Kenny O'Carr, 55. 15. He's in the 2. He's in 53. He's in the 17 for the double 18. 37. Look, your car 10. For a very important leg on the board. Hold his throw. Six. Can you there has been a weakness. 18. That's been it for Luke. Yeah, it's, he seems to either just pop it in one. Fourteen. Or chase it around. Luke, your car four. Getting shot on the second leg. Pops Luke it in one. Third. Just as you mentioned, as we move our attention back to the players that you'd like to see here. We're getting some really good interaction on social media, guys. Please do keep these coming in. They're like Kenny deserves this. Game on. I'd like to see coming up here. Wayne Bardell's name mentioned in there. I think we would like to see that, but we didn't mention him because it was just so unrealistic. 100. He wouldn't take that invite, we don't feel. He said that he wouldn't be interested in playing, really. He doesn't like playing, does he, anymore? 99. Which is... No, I think he still does a fair few exhibitions, but they're they're fairly limited. He has a massive workload, of course. 57. James Hubbard. Yep. Robbie Green. Yeah, I think Robbie's back. 140. A, bit. a couple of good suggestions, guys. Please do keep them coming in at MSS Darts at the Edgar 501. Let us know who you would like to see at the Moda Super Series. Well, I showed you a little thing on Facebook about whether it's basically three darts in the board. Hey, two of them in the Trouble 20, the other one in the Trouble 20, and it's skewed where the dart is in the wired 60. area of the Trouble 20, and someone's asking, is it 135 or 180? So I just put 180, and then someone says, no. What would I know? 140. Well, ironically, I've just uh, heard of... 140. Look, you've got 41. Kirk Shepard. I wonder if Kirk's still playing. Yeah, good addition to the, Game the Super third Series. As there pops in a, a 14 darter and the double break of throw. 3 nil lead. Former World Championship runner-up. Yeah. Both like Luke to throw first. Game on. Some fun with Kirk over the years, that's for sure. 140. Yeah, there's a there's a different rule that often people get confused with. So when we have a dart that deflects and 57. doesn't enter a wired segment, it's where the point touches. However, if the dart has entered, 99. for example, the wired segment of the Trouble 20 and then skews across, which it can't really do any more on the modern board because this board of course is six it's basically bladed so it's pressed onto the board so it's fairly impossible it's a good what, centimeter deep the spider of the board the wired frame that's then put on a press and then forced into the board so you couldn't really do it but on the old boards where you had a, an external wire that was basically stapled to the board but you could slide a dart underneath it that could happen so yeah where a dart has not Fish entered a wired area and then the point just touches that is what the score is however if it's in between a wired area 60 that is look your car score. 126 game shot on the match and that is look the way Hitler. to close a game out when you need to win 4-0 that's exactly what Luke Littler has done. 91.09 the average, 1.180, five 140s, and wins it with a beautiful 126 checkout. When we come back, Alexander Merckx takes on Nathan Gervin.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Luke Littler has got the better Kenny Nayans by four legs to nil, meaning that the destiny of the group will lie in the last game of the session between Alex Spellman and Stephen Johnston. Well, next up for us is Alexander Merckx up against Nathan Gervin. This is the round of both of their group campaigns and both players who know the destiny of their travel already for tomorrow and Friday. Watching this one in the commentary box, Chris and Matt. Thanks, Henry. Well, he has been super impressive today. Nathan Gervin. He has gone so f so far. Uh, four one win over Kenny Nayans. Then a four two win over Spellman. Then a four two win over Stephen. Johnston, and then that beautiful performance against Luke Littler, where he averaged 103. First, like he said, Alexander did so first. On Monday, Game on. he was pointless. Picked up four points yesterday. 140. I think the impressive thing here for Nathan Gervan is he's lost all his games on day one. His bottom of the table. 96. It'd be so easy just to stay there, ride it, and wait till Thursday, Friday. However, he's guaranteed himself a place in Group B. 43. With a fixture still to go on the back of winning <laughs> seven out of his last nine matches. Yeah, very, very impressed. Just over the course what of the, the last two days, any real major flaws 59. in the action, he's... At times, ironed out. And this is the way I like to see him throw with control. 134. It's just a, a different player. 133. Nathan Car 91. Like we mentioned after day one, you don't judge someone on the things that go wrong. You judge someone on the reaction to the thing that goes wrong. Game shot on the first leg, Nathan Gerban. Well, there's not too much going wrong right now because that's a 12 dart break of throw. With a 91 checkout. Second leg, Nathan to throw first. Game on. <laughs> 80. Bounce out there, caught the flight. See. You can sometimes get a bit fortunate with him, where it sort of swings back and rests with the point touching the board. That is the case. You get the points. 100. One hundred and forty. One hundred. Fifty-nine. As we mentioned, Nathan didn't pick up a win on Monday and lost to Merck's 4-1. Merck's average just shy of 90. 140. Although some revenge yesterday, winning 4 0 against Merckx with a 95 and a half, two 180s, and a 168, and four out of seven on the doubles. Right now, he's just finding. Game shot on the second leg. Gear. Nathan Gerban. This is fabulous. Ninety one checkout leg one. Third leg, Alexander to throw first. Game on. Ninety one checkout leg two. The 12 and 14. 100. 26 darts used, an average of 13 darts per leg, which is 115.62. 57. Which backs up the 103.66 he hit in his last match as well. Yeah. 43. And looking comfortable once again. 100. Again, if you throw in. Maybe with the 100 average for the last couple of matches, you're, you're going to feel good. 100. 100.
60. I just had a message back from Kirk Shepherd. Of course, he... 131. ...to get the early signs of the dreaded yips, but I think did the right thing. Just walked away, put them down, and then... 80. ...eased back Alexander in. Alexander Carr, 136. No 88. One hundred. Alexander Carr, forty-eight. The brilliance of Gervan so far. He's double seventeen. He's opted to come against it. Sixteen. Bit of a Nathan mess Carr, there from Alexander Merck slipping in the double seven, then splitting, then missing. Something that's not happening a lot for Gervan at the minute. Seventy-seven. Alexander Carr, thirty-two. There's a miss. The mini opportunity. Yeah, I certainly didn't. Expect him to miss the way he's been going Alexander up to that Mertz. point. He was two from two. It's a hold from Merckx. Advantage still with Nathan Fourth like Nathan to do first. Game on. Fifty-seven. Ninety one, ninety five, ninety six. Last game, Group A coming up next. Alex Spellman with the darts taking on Stephen 99. Johnstone in a match that will decide the group. 60. Alex Spellman wins. He goes through direct to Saturday night. 90. Alex Spellman loses that match. Stephen Johnson will come off 60. the bottom of the table. Luke Carr, 160. And Luke Littler will end on the top. 100. 100. Nathan O'Connor, 60. For the hold of throw. Not been enjoying tops. I think you've got to go left, pal. Yeah. Gives himself another look. Don't be too worried about that, because now an open target that he finds. Game shot on the fourth leg. Nathan Gerban. Clinch fist to tell you how much he enjoyed that one. This leg Alexander to throw first, game on. Playing really well. What signs going into his Group B campaign, which will start tomorrow evening around 10 p.m. 78. Three opportunities. Get himself through. 135. To Saturday night. Just had some right. interesting okay. information, Re. A lot of the players we've been mentioning today and some others that we've not mentioned that all will be 59. involved in the next uh, well, coming weeks and the next series. I've been authorised to share that 93. information, but when I do... and. I will let you know, but very, very interesting. One of the oh, really interesting lists. Some, some other interesting names in there that we haven't yet mentioned as well. Sixty. Alexander Carr, twenty-seven. 
Getting shot on the fifth leg, Alexander Merckx. Well, there's, there's one, one player that I'm fascinated by because it was a, a player that arrived on the scene towards the six leg Nathan to third first my game career on. that I played against a, a couple of times. And he looked a really exciting talent, Joey Tenberger. Sure one hundred and thirty-four had an injury or just fell out of love with the game, but he was a an exciting talent. 58. Maybe we'll tease you with the odd one each day. Nathan's got to stay switched on here just to put this one away. It's, 134. For me, it's important that he... 100. This one. Just to finish off on a high... By winning five from five. Remember, this is a guy who was... 93. Struggling away on Monday. One hundred and forty. bounced back Nathan yesterday with some good performances. And has really found another gear today. 60. Martin Turner just messaging in. Great to see Martin last week. Yeah, really impressed 43. with Nathan. Nathan, Nathan Lucar, last 80. couple of days. Fifty-nine. Tops of the match. Sixty. Yeah. Alexander Lucar, one hundred and sixty. It's a great first start. Follows it in well. One out of them. Oh, that would have 20. been a great way to take us all the way. Gervan to end Game his day. The match. Nathan Gervan. Successfully. Well earned result. Well earned position in Group B. He's turned this group completely around. And he's going to be dangerous going into his Group B campaign that will start tomorrow from 10 p.m. But he ends the day. A 4 2 victory. Something Alex Spellman will need to do. He's going to be winning this group, that game, coming up in a couple of minutes' time.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Nathan Gervin has sealed a 4-2 success against Alexander Merckx to make it a perfect Wednesday for the Scott, picking up all 10 points possible. Well, we now head into the final game of Group A and the scenario is very simple indeed. Win for Alex Spellman and he is into Saturday night's final automatically defeat and it'll be Luke Littler who goes through. So that is the scenario at play. Let's get play underway with Matt and Chris. I'm sure Luke Littler's going to be glued to a screen somewhere right now. Interested in the outcome of this one. Because this will decide whether he's got to get up late tomorrow night. Or stay up late and come back to take on Group B. Or whether he goes direct through to Saturday night and he can go enjoy a roller coaster and go in the arcades down on the Portsmouth seafront. Spellman, one to three. Was four to nine at nine o'clock this morning. Stephen Johnston, nine to four, was 13 to eight. Uh, it's been a little bit of a wobble for Spellman. Third meeting. First leg is Alex to two first. Game on. on Monday afternoon, match number 13. Spelman 28. Winning 4-2 with a 88. Yesterday, it was a 4-1 win. 140. For Stephen, averaging 85-48. So it's not without the realms of possibility that Luke Littler does complete the 80. job and wins Group A. I didn't think it was going to happen. Although I didn't think Bellman would 60. lose the matches he's lost. And by the scoreline, well, normally we would see the players in and around 20 points to have a leg difference of similar, if not more. 58. It's been a group where we're going to have a few matched scenarios going down the table been very level. One thing I'm really enjoying in the early phases of this for Stephen Johnson, he's bottom of the table. If he wins this, it means nothing. He's still going to be coming back tomorrow in the mornings, in Group C, regardless of whether he wins or loses. The implications of this match all come down to the top of the table. Saturday night, Alex Spellman or Luke Littler. Look at the intensity that Stephen Johnson is playing with. He is very intrinsically motivated. He's only motivated by winning. He doesn't care about the table. No, no. For him, it's just a, it's just a head-to-head, -head, isn't it? And we we speak about momentum a lot in sport, and fifty-eight. I think it backs it up with Steve that McCall, performance on Tuesday from Nathan winning. What did he win? Three out of five. From that point where he started to find 41. wins, he's actually Alex won McCall, eight of his last ten matches. He's going in with plenty of form into Group B campaign. 81. Stephen McCall, 112. Expect to see him back on Saturday night. The doubles have been the strong point of Stephen Johnston. And Game they continue the to be leg. so. Stephen Johnston. The back of a 112 finish as he gives us the old aeroplane celebration. Either that or he wanted a big cuddle off of Paul Hinks. Second leg, Stephen to throw first. Game on. Eighty-five. You know that fifty-eight. Spellman likes Mondays. Nathan doesn't. It's been a wobbly Wednesday for Spellman. Eighty-five. Yeah, a wonderful Wednesday for Gervin. Five out of five. Thirty-five. After Monday, we were thinking, my goodness, what a player that is going to to end up in Group C. One hundred. All the talk at 
9.30 Monday was about Luke Littler. It wasn't if he was going to win Group A, it was when. One hundred and thirty six. One hundred. Thirty. Stephen Carr, one hundred and thirty one. Working out a bit of the mathematics. Surprisingly, 91. a topic that dart players aren't as good as you think they would be. It's more to do with patterns, isn't it, and breakdowns. Yeah, yeah you don't you don't really count, do you? I just like someone says to me, "Well, how do you do the maths when you take one three seven away from five or one?" I don't. I, I just know it's 40. three six four. I think you see so many of the. Patterns repeated. He's on the second leg, Stephen Johnson. You just know. Alex Spellman, in the biggest game of his week the so Alex far, is first. having game his off. worst performance of the week so far by quite some distance. He's averaging at the moment down in the 60s. Forty-two. Having an absolute stinker. Ninety five. Seven J. At the same time, Stephen Johnston is finding. An average that is above his running average by a few points. I mean, the, the way Spellman started the day. 119. It was like a, a long time ago, but he averaged 105.76 in a 4 1 win against Merck. 84. 84. You're in running, has reacted to this as well, Spellman. No longer favourite, thirteen to eight to get over the line in this one. Eighty one. Oh, Stephen Johnstone has gone four to nine favourite in running. One out of forty. He's Alex Ocar, trying one to get a second break of throw, which might be too much for Spellman to be able to recover from. Yeah, I think he's in a world of trouble at three 0 down. Even 64. though the Ocar, would be off and he would relax. Or 17 or trouble nine if you're James Wade 97 Alex your car 100 this is a vital shot the way that spell uh, Johnston sorry takes out his finishers can't name of a poke at this 50 but he'll get a poke 80 Stephen car 50 I say it's been such a strong aspect of his game it's not just saying it's strong. Game he is the, the best leg. finisher Steven this week Johnson. by a yeah. mile. Yeah, it's not even it's not even close. And again, you can see what it means to him. Well, this is about winning. Yeah, this is all getting himself Ball ready for Steven tomorrow, isn't it? First. I'd like Game to on. see this. Listen, he could just go up there and think, oh, well. But you never 45. know when he might have to play Spellman again. You know who else might be getting themselves ready for tomorrow? Alex Spellman. How much of this will... 92. ...going into tomorrow. Still a fair bit to go yet. Still got to get over the line. 140. 
140. Great reply. Sixty. Almond has pinched the darts here. Can he build? Got to go back up. Fifty nine. One hundred. Well, I was just about to say he could really do with a two trouble visit. One hundred thirty eight. He'll be back for the 72. 100. Under considerable your pressure. Car 72. Has to win this match. To win Group A. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Such a big target. 48. Steve Ricard, 56. Tops. 36. Oh, Alex Yukar, 24. Mentioned how good the finishing was. He was at 60% prior to that visit, but he's going to have to go he's through it the fourth leg. all again. Spellman. As Spellman finds double 12. Closes the gap to two and has the darts in leg five. Fifth leg, Alex to through first. Two match darts for Johnstone. That would have put Littler into Saturday night's final. This is still very much up in 59. the air. 59. Don't forget, we are back at 1 p.m. tomorrow for Group Ninety-nine. C. Always on the balcony. We'll talk you through the groups at the conclusion of this match. Fifty-eight. And then we're back tomorrow night at ten o'clock for Group B. Both groups going to be absolutely fascinating. One hundred and twenty-one. Got a feeling this is going to be a fascinating end to the match. 81. This one is far from over. 43 points the lead, plus these. 65. 100. Alex Hukar, 157. Sixty-one. Forty-five. Alex Hukar, ninety-six. Fifty-six. Stephen Hukar, one hundred and twenty. For the match. Travel and double. Back 60. comes Spellman. Alex Yukar, 40. Close the gap to one. Game shot on the fifth leg. Alex Spellman. This is Stephen's final Six chance Stephen to with first. the darts Game on. to serve it out. 85. 140. 96.
55. One hundred. Needs another travel. Number nineteen works. One hundred thirty-six. He's one seventy. About to say he doesn't hit a lot of maxes, but he'd love the one eighty there to Alex the left tops. One hundred and seventy. One seventy for Spellman. There's one of them. Ninety eight. Civil car one hundred and sixty. Sixty. Alex your car seventy two. Even Johnston led three nil. Defeat for Spellman to put him in Group B. A win puts him straight in Saturday night's final. Once, double four. 68, Stephen Ducar, 100. 68. Game shot on the match, Stephen Johnston. Stephen Johnston lets out an almighty roar as he puts... Alex Spellman into second position in Group A and a place in Group B. Produce 83.6 for Johnstone. Spellman 80.97. It was a good effort to try and fight back, but left himself just a little bit too much to do. Well, to go over everything that's happened today and in Group A, the boys are up on the balcony. Chris, thank you very much indeed. And we went down to the very last dart in deciding who the victor of Group A is going to be. And it was Luke Littler who prevailed in the end. And I did walk through the players' practice room as I came up here just to see if he was watching. He was. He was in there watching that game of darts. As I came through, it was 3-0. He was sort of pacing around. He can have a couple of days off now. He can go get himself ready for finals night. But Alex Spellman, I came up here with an idea of what story it was going to be, which was when it came down to the crunch game, the game he needed to win, the performance just wasn't there. But then when I got up here, I sat here for a couple of legs and he was reeling it back, reeling it back, gave himself an opportunity to get that back to 3-3 and have the advantage of throw. But again, just at that crucial key moment, just fell a little bit short. So let's have a look then at the group table at the end. And Alex Bellman, the player who led for the most part, will return for Group B darts on Thursday and Friday, respectively. Just to confirm, Luke Little at the group winner, who it has to be said today when the crucial moments came. After that 4-0 defeat to Nathan Gervin, you, you can't fault him. Yeah, and he's got the four-leg gap there on the leaderboard, which was the 4-0 when he got straight back mm -hmm. again. At one point, it looked pretty much unrealistic to think Luke Littler was going to win the group. He needed to get a big result. He needed other results to go in his favour. It's all mapped out the way for Luke Littler here. He's through to Saturday. He was the favourite to win this group. He's the favourite to win this week. And I still think he is. Nathan Gervin, though, has put in a five-star performance today. And that's kind of gone under the radar because of the race for top place. That he won all five matches. And going into Group B, he's a live wire and a contender. Forget Monday. He did. And I think we've got to do the same thing as well. And then we're going to judge him on what we've seen Tuesday, Wednesday, which means he could quite easily win the group, never mind the contenders to go through. He could be the Group B winner. And when you look at the players in there, who's going to stop him on the form that he's shown at the back end of today? Well, this is how the groups are going to break down over the next two days here at the Live Lounge. Let's begin with Group C first, because that's what we're going to see tomorrow and Friday afternoon. It sees a man who's got the record average for this competition. It sees a man who's been winning WDF events recently, and a man who just at the weekend was an ADC Open title winner in James Richardson. It's a good group, isn't it? It's a tasty group, that one. I think James Richardson's the one that really catches the eye, though, at the moment on the basis of that recent ADC title and the form he's been showing away from here. So it'd be good to see how he transfers that into this arena. Well, that's his qualification for Series 3. However, he's now qualified twice for Series 4. 
that is off the back of winning those events, the ADC and open system that allows qualification to get here to the Moda Super Series. So by the fact of winning that, he's already guaranteed his place, which means there might be some more places available and open. So message to everyone at home, get yourself to your ADC. Well, let's have another look then at Group B because we're going to see one of our Champions League Week returnees in Adam Mould enter the fray tomorrow night. And we're also going to see the return of Richard North. Probably going to hear the return of Richard North as well. There's no doubt well. about that, is there? There's one thing Richard North likes to do is talk. So we're probably going to hear all about what's happened to Richard North in between them. So there'll be plenty to talk about on commentary. Also, Gary Blades coming into there as well. We've not seen the best of Gary Blades here. We've... Gary Blades, the best of it, is quite sporadic, mm -hmm. but we've been seeing it quite recently. He's certainly been doing some good things when he's been playing on the WF events at the back end of last year as well. So I'll be interested to see how Gary Blade gets on here over the next couple of days. So that is our 10 p.m. action tomorrow night, Group B. Remember, Group C starts at 1 o'clock these days at the Super Series. And, of course, you could be here on Saturday night for the finals, be in a crowd, be in amongst the atmosphere for the Week 10 finals. We know Luke Littler is going to be there. You can be there as well. What do you have to do to get there? Scan the QR code. <laughs> scan the QR code, otherwise known as the Tungsten T-Rex. Give that a little bit of a scan. Or head over to dartshop.tv. You can also get your places booked for that. And you can pick your week as well you want to go to. So if you want to go to week 12, Champions Week, take your pick. Head over to dartshop.tv and you can get your tickets to Super Series Saturday. I think that's what we're going to call it here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. But as far as Wednesday's concerned here at the Super Series, well, it was Luke. It was just too good for the rest of the field. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.